Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please, Mrs. Meltzer. Thank you. Mrs. West. Here. Mr. Keyes. Here. Mr. Pearl. Here. Mr. Cannon. Here. Mr. Argona. Here. Mr. Gillahan. Here. Mrs. Meltzer. Here. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Yes, there are. Item five will be deleted. Item 13 is deleted. And that is it. Thank you. So moved. Yes. Okay. Support. Thank you for the amended agenda. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillahan. Yes. This is Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And welcome to your township board meeting this evening. If there's any item that you wish to speak on as it comes before the board, please come to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. If you have something you'd like to speak on that is not part of tonight's agenda, we have public comment cards in the front of the room to your left. Just fill one of those out. And at the end of the meeting, we'll hear what you have to say. And before we begin with item one, we have a public service announcement from Clerk Meltzer. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. I just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, we continue to increase uh, the demand to process passports at the clerk's office, and so those of you that may not know that, we do that. And as of last year, we, we um, had our highest uh, service of 2,285 passports and, and photos. We also take photos, um, bringing in a revenue of $88,155. So, it's a great service to the community. They love it, and um, we continue to do good work in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. With item one, I'll request reconsideration of sidewalk waiver denial, Paula Court. We are, the title of this, I think we were making, um, I did speak with our attorney on this, that we, res, uh, this is a rescind. So, we're, uh, um, dear board members, I'm requesting to be placed on the next board agenda to have the board rescind the denial of my request to waive sidewalks on Paula Court. In addition, I'm requesting approval to file a covenant to address the sidewalk on, on Millar Road. This is from uh, Al Santia. And so, um, if I can. So what happened is I know the board initially um, sent this back to planning and uh, unanimously planning sent it back to us and we unanimously said, okay, we'll, um, we'll deny the waiver. However, when, um, since then I had spoke, or yeah, since then I spoke with Mr. Santia, he was unaware that um, that waiver was denied. And he wasn't at, evidently wasn't at the planning meeting and then he wasn't also at our, um, the meeting where we made the final determination. But at the initial meeting, we had discussed with him. We, you know, he conveyed to us how he did want that um, sidewalk uh, removed or that waiver in place because um, it is a smaller area. He did have show examples where there were other community, other enclosed communities that um, were waived. Sidewalks were waived. It's a small street and. Um, that the one part on Millar, if it could be a, in the form of a covenant, so that he could still make a contribution for future if there was going to be sidewalks in place. So he, he was not, he didn't understand how the process worked evidently, and so that was his purpose for coming back and asking for us to rescind and then take, take it up as a new motion um, to, again, you know, to request that we would um, uh, not deny his request to waive the sidewalks and put a, a covenant in place. Mr. Santia, did you have anything to add? Albert Santia, 37598 Paula Court, Clinton Township. Um, yeah, I wasn't aware of, the, of that first meeting that you guys had on it because there was a uh, little mess up, a little mess up with the, um, uh, who, was, uh, who was supposed to be here. Because I have a partner involved in this in this uh, project now, and uh, he was out of town, so he didn't notify me about it. But um, you know, I started this project, I believe, 12 years ago, and now we're finally starting to build some houses over there, and um, come into fruition with uh, what we thought, what we wanted to do originally. And originally, we didn't want any sidewalks in there. It was going to be a, a private with a gate in front of it where we didn't want anybody else coming through there. So um, 
you know, we're asking that you guys tell us that we don't have to put the sidewalks up over there. Okay, would you be willing to front the money to the township so we could put sidewalks where we would like well, them? I, I tell you what, it, if you get everybody on Millar to do that, I agree to it. Because I don't see that anybody on Millar ever putting sidewalks up over there. At the time most of the homes were built, they weren't required to. Right. There's not one sidewalk between Moravian and uh, Utica on either side of the road. Why is it all of a sudden that I'm getting asked to put a sidewalk in? There's not even one in there. Well, that's part of our, our ordinance. I understand. I'm asking for the waiver on that. Okay. Are there any comments or questions of board members? <laughs> Mr. Cannon, before this uh, matter is uh, addressed with a motion, <laughs> I want to... Uh, raise a point since Mr. Santia is here. As you may recall, since you were present, uh, he was at a Budget Ways and Means meeting. At that time, there was a discussion with respect to the manner in which the development was occurring. And uh, there was action taken at that uh, Budget Ways and Means meeting uh, that advised him through that action that no occupancy permits were going to be allowed for any homes in there until an actual master deed was recorded right. since he had indicated that he was proceeding uh, to develop that area as a site condominium residential project under the Condominium Act. And uh, I spoke with Mr. Penna, who was there also on his behalf that day, and had that further discussion with him. I did talk to Mr. Penna on the phone. He advised me that uh, Mr. Santillo was considering uh, retaining Mr. Abdo, an attorney who specializes in condominium work, to assist him because I had some deep concern since it appeared as though he was attempting to proceed on uh, some executory purchase agreements for two lots. And I was concerned as to whether or not he could successfully record a master deed without those lot owners having to join in as developers. And uh, when I called Mr. Abdo, he said that he had had discussions with Mr. Santia, but as of that time, I'm not sure he was fully retained. So I would like to ask Mr. Santia, if I may, whether or not at this point in time you have fully retained Mr. Abdo and whether he's working diligently to process all of the documents so that you have your uh, master deed in place before any construction work is completed so that those homes would be ready for occupancy. Yeah, so I, I, I did go ahead and retain him. And um, uh, he called, there's actually just one lot, not two, that, that was sold. And um, that one lot, he is working with the um, lender on Taking, giving us the deed back and then giving it back to them for the you know for the condo association, so it, all that's in place right now. So that's all. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just stating that because I'm reminding you that there was that board action. So down the road, if uh, if uh, be advised that that master deed has to be yes. properly recorded and in place before yeah. we're going to issue an occupancy permit. I understand. Well, the only reason for sidewalks in your subdivision is that if there are any children living there, they do have to walk to the corner to catch a bus. I got two little girls. I'm, I'm at the very end of the street, so if anybody's more concerned about it, it should be me. And I, I really care less about those sidewalks because we're going to put a uh, gate in the front there. So there won't be cars zooming in and out of there. So, I, you know. And, I, and as far as I'm concerned, too, my other partner, they don't want the sidewalks either. So. Mr. Cannon, if I can. Also, um, as I stated, in other communities, they were not um, the board. Even after our ordinance was in place, we provided for a waiver of sidewalks. Although I know we want sidewalks throughout our township as a rule because this is a sidewalk that's internal. Um, that's why I, I, you know, I think the request is reasonable. I think um, to just, you know, carve out or be arbitrary in saying no to this particular development when there's several other developments in the township where we did allow that waiver with the same type of uh, setup, you know, where it's very limited and there's not cars going in and out. So I think this is a reasonable request. 
Um, but there would have to be two motions. It would be a motion to rescind. I think Mr. Mr. Uh, Dolan, is that correct? And then we could vote to... Well, well, that's correct. First of all, you need a motion to rescind your prior action. And mm -hmm. then secondly, I believe we need to clarify whether his request applies solely to Paul Accord or whether, it's, whether he's requesting it on Millar as well. Correct. Since from his comments, he seems to be addressing both. Yes. Well, if we waive the one on Millar, the next person who comes in will be able to say the same thing, that there's no other sidewalk on Millar, mm -hmm. which is why I'm opposed to doing that. I want to start somewhere and, and get some sidewalks on that beautiful area. And as far as the interior, if, if he's saying they don't want them, then I, I would, I think it's a monetary thing too. We would like that money to put sidewalks in somewhere else where we can't afford them. Well, I, I'll be willing to put in our, <coughs> on our covenant on our master deed that if you guys want the sidewalk on Millar, we'll, we'll pay for the sidewalk on Millar whenever it comes to it. Mr. Dolan, we've done this a number of times, haven't we, where we've asked someone who wanted a waiver for the money to put in sidewalks? And Mrs. Bednar, typically you have a, a price on, on those sidewalks. We've done it a couple times. On, I, I seem to recall us doing that on Hall Road previously. Where, where a, uh, a payment was made. That's one of the ways in which we've handled it. So, so yes, there is some precedent for that. And Mrs. Benner, how much are we saying sidewalks cost these days? Recently, just last year, we put out a bid for sidewalk, um, and it was about $8 a square foot. Are there any other questions of board members or comments? Just, so, all right, I want to make sure I understand this issue uh, correctly. So, uh, through the chair to you, Al, good, yeah. good evening. Good um, evening. So, so this matter appeared before us both um, on, let's see, the, the 8th of August and then again on the 20th. It's been to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission has said no waiver of the sidewalks. Is that correct? Am I correct? In That's that correct. Reading yes. of this issue? Okay. Yes. Right. All right. And so the issue, Mr. Dolan, that you brought up was a separate issue from the sidewalk correct. waiver issue. Correct. But, but there's another... Um, owner of certain property that's part of the site plan condo development. Well, what's happened is is he was before Budget Ways and Means because there had been, uh, they wanted to start construction on a home, and at that point in time, there was no recorded master deed, yet we were advised that the project is being developed as a site condo project, and a developer under the Act a developer has to record the deed. So that means that um, title will have to be conveyed back to Mr. Santia, and then he would have to reconvey it out after the deed's recorded, yeah. or, okay. the, or alternatively, joining as a developer would have to be the property owner. And I did talk to Mr. Abdo, who... who told me that he felt that he could effect the necessary procedures in a timely fashion. Uh, and now, at that time, he hadn't been fully retained. Mr. Santee is now represented uh, tonight that he's retained him. Okay. Paul, if, Great. I, if I may. Sure. Um, yeah. So originally, those the street was put in, and there was four lots already there. So I sold one of the lots. And um, I had a hard time with my engineer getting all his documents and everything ready to go to get this master deed done. And the guy, the gentleman that I they sold the lot to, he wanted to start building the house immediately. So they, they went ahead and they gave him the approval on, on building the house. Oh, but that issue is before us tonight just because for a sort of a discussion purpose because we don't have approval of a site plan or a site development plan for the condo. Is that well, correct? No, actually what it is is we don't have a recorded master deed okay. establishing we the, approved the site the plan. condominium oh, project. Okay. All right. Yeah. There's there's still a couple a couple houses that need to be torn down on the street uh, before everything will be completely done over okay. there. Okay. Yeah. 
And so, um, so we have a master deed. Um, what do we have by way of plans as to what's actually being built there? Do we have anything in that nature? Yeah, I, I, I got my, I, I've, I've submitted my blueprints about six months ago. Okay. And those don't, do or do not contain sidewalks on them? They, well, they, they, they put it in, in the site plan. Um, I'm waiting for the site plan to get approved. It's okay. been, it's only been about two months now that I'm waiting for the site plan to be approved. Okay. So, um, I'll just give you my personal take on this, and that is, um, what you all do with your gated community uh, is quite frankly up to you. But with the feet of frontage on Millar, I think we need sidewalks there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of uh, my position on it. Um, you know, asking for sidewalks to go in in place um, someplace else or the dollars and all of that. Um, yeah, I think we've done that before, but um, other gated communities, I I don't know that we've required that of them. Um, but All right. okay. you have the floor, Mrs. Meltzer. I agree. Um, if, <clears throat> if I could make a motion then to rescind the previous board um, denial, and um, if I can get a second, I I, I also I just want to say I, denial I, on what? I agree with you on um, the denial to waive the s sidewalk. So we want to rescind that from the the previous board meeting. We have to rescind our action, and then we would take up this the next motion, which would be to, and I agree with you, I think that um, what he does inside the, the gated area, um, he should be allowed to make that determination, but that there would be, and this is where Jack would need to weigh in, Jack, um, does that translate into a covenant on Millar so that dollars can be taken and used today, no, or? Put them in. Put them in. On, put the sidewalks in on Put Millar. the sidewalk in yeah. on Millar now? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah, I agree. I would agree. When there's no sidewalk. Can we just rescind part of a motion? No, let's first do that. I, I just made the, the motion to rescind. Can I, can I say something, though? I mean, yeah, if I get, a, if I get a support. Go ahead. Is there a support? Well, Mr. Don't, do we have to rescind the whole right. motion or just the one on the inside? The proper sidewalk. way to do this would be to move to rescind and then take whatever further course of action you want to take. If you want to. Well, you've got a number of options. You've got the potential to act on Paula Court and on Millar. On either of those, you can require the sidewalks. You can waive the sidewalks completely. Okay, I'll support the motion to rescind. Broke up, please. What? Can, can he finish? No, no he, he supported your motion. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> But he was, he was talking when he interrupted him, and I think for the sake of everybody here, that our attorney should finish what he's, he was saying. He was, there was three options, so we Well, there's actually four options. Well, okay, which I then. Think we've talked about already. We've talked about All right. Approve, require the sidewalks, waive the sidewalks, execute a covenant and record it for them to be installed later, or donate funds in lieu of the sidewalks. So those are your four yeah. choices. Okay. Yes. So, so. We're moving. Mr. Pearl supported. I supported, I, yes. Okay. So, Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. No. Mr. Keyes. No. Mr. Cannon. No. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Okay. Mr. Gillingham. Mr. Gillingham. Mr. Gillingham. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just oh, wait, I'm sorry. Mr. Gillingham. I figured I'd have an opportunity. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, motion passes. So. All four. right. So, four to three. Now. The floor is open. You're making a motion? So. But you indicated that you were doing sort of, you know, the first one with the intention of doing a second. So. So, but we didn't, we were talking about the covenant that would be installed later or we, I just think right now the, the language that we're going to get support on is um, that, that I, you put I, the sidewalk in yeah, on Millar. And, you know, it doesn't seem fair to me that, that I'll be the only piece of property on Millar between for in a, in a two mile stretch, that's going to have a sidewalk. How, how does it seem fair? I think the hope is in two years, ten years, fifteen years that you won't be the only ones. Okay, so that's so fine. You, you got so, you so get we'll, to lead the way. Well, we'll we'll put it in our we'll put it in our in our master deed that each individual has to pay pay their share of that sidewalk when it comes to it. 
I mean, to I'm me, that that's what makes sense. And that, that I, would. Oh. So, uh, Mr. Santi, I supported, which is not necessarily in my nature, but right. support the repeal of um, uh, or or rescinding the order requiring the sidewalks because I firmly believe that we do need them on Malar. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's uh, a reasonable requirement and I think we've uh, okay. sort of almost bent over backwards for this development given the uh, you know the hoopla with the with the a bizarre ownership issue, and now I'm, I'm trying. Um, I'm trying leaving some, sidewalks within the development. I'm trying to put some high-end homes over there. Yep, that's going to be great for the township property taxes. Indeed, okay. indeed. Yep. So these people don't want sidewalks in front of their houses. Yep, oh, and you understand, and I they're not going to. to but right. the feet of frontage that is going to go in um, on Malar is yep. going to have sidewalks. Uh, okay, and, and that's fine. If that's the way you guys want to vote, that that's fine. Um, okay. Okay. You want to make the floor is open for a motion. Go ahead. I make the motion to uh, require uh, sidewalks on Malar um, uh, as a part of Mr. Dolan uh, as a part of the. Uh, Site development plan or the master deed or whatever the right, right. Ter uh, terminology is. Your motion is, is to have the sidewalks installed uh, as part of the development of the site condo project uh, at the time that the, the rest of the paving is put in for the street and so on. I think it's in. Well, I'll let Mary address it then. So I, I would need clarification of when the sidewalk needs to go in because originally this was developed as lot splits. So the pavement it is, is in, the sanitary sewer is in, the water is in. So what I would say is we'd want it in prior to the first uh, C of O. So it's very clear for myself and the building department of when it's going in. Um, so at time of having the master deed and bylaws for the final C of O, we would want the sidewalk installed. That way it's very clear at what point, because unfortunately this has already developed somewhat. <laughs> On, and any lot, whichever one comes first, because right. well, he's trying to build. Yeah, so before the CFO of the first lot, final, sort of. Um. So moved. Uh, so, and now you're waving, you're uh, waving the sidewalks on the interior. They've already the been motion? rescinded. Right. Okay. Doesn't doesn't that have to be in a motion? Nope. They're waving. No, okay. Ms. You Dolan? can clarify that the, yeah. so, so there's clarification. The motion as stated is to uh, require on or before the issuance of a C of O for the first lot in the development, the installation of the sidewalk on Millar with the further understanding that the sidewalks on Paula Court are waived. Support that. So moved. Okay. That, that's your motion? Yes. That's his motion and he supported support it. it. And I have a, just a comment. So I, I def, like I stated, I am all for sidewalks throughout this township, but I think that putting the sidewalk in at this time, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, lead the way. That is a great perspective, uh, Mr. Aragona. But I think if it's 10 years down the road, that's 10 years that that sidewalk's degraded, and then, you know, that's got to be replaced. I would rather see us wait um, and then put it in like um, the petitioner, Mr. Santina, stated, and then everybody pays for it at that time. You know, I, I just think it's going to be a very long time coming, if at all, before a sidewalk gets put in on Millar. So I won't be supporting that. But I do appreciate your, you know, the board's willingness to work uh, with the, with Mr. Santia, and I think this is a great Mr. compromise. Mr. Pearl. I'm looking at any kids that are going to school having some place to stand mm -hmm. that's safer, waiting for a bus instead of in the middle of the street, in a cul-de-sac or whatever, because the bus is not going inside that private and, gated community. And, and those shoulders on that road are tight. They are really, really tight. Yeah. So. Okay. Mr. Aragona? Yeah, and, and just real quick to that end, uh, you know, I can sympathize with, if you're going to have a gated community, you're not going to have a lot of people in there if, if that community might not want sidewalks. I understand that. But like I said before, 
I, I think that would be good to lead the way. I think it'd be good to put those sidewalks there. And if we turn the, the floor over to Mr. Thompson, he can probably do a half hour, 45 minute lecture on making sure our communities are more bikeable or walkable. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn for you, but uh, that's kind of the, the way that communities are going. That's something that a lot of planners look for because that gives a, a good feel to the township. It, it allows people to uh, use their the assets in that township more. Mr. Aragona, I, I've been there. I've been living there for, for 20 plus years. I'm the first one that would love to see sidewalks going, okay? You know how hard it's been for us to try to get onto that bike path over on 16 Mile? Mm -hmm. My father was alive. We used to love going on the bikes over there. We almost killed ourselves 10 times trying to get over there. Okay, but to make everybody connected over there, then it makes sense. I have no problem. I'd be willing to, to I'll be the first one to put the sidewalk in. But make it make sense on it. Mm -hmm. Just to have this one you know, sidewalk that's going to be 170 feet wide, the only one between Moravian and Utica doesn't make any sense to me. But I agree. Get the sidewalks in there. I would love to see everybody have sidewalks over there. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Roll call, please. Oh, Mr. Keenan. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Keenan. No, that's okay. Through the chair to Mr. Dolan, just a point of clarification on the vote. Obviously, the board just uh, allowed for the sidewalks to be waived on the interior of the development. By voting yes on this motion currently, am I agreeing to that, or is that just a point of clarification within the motion? Uh, you're you're agreeing to waive the sidewalks in, on the interior, but not on Millar if you vote yes. So it's not just wait, or just forcing uh, the sidewalks on Millar. It's also waiving the interior. That's correct. correct. Okay. The motion is twofold in its result. One Can, is the sidewalks on Millar are to go in prior to the issuance of the first occupancy permit on one of the lots within this development. Second, the sidewalks on Paula Court are waived. Are we able to separate that and have two different votes? Right now they're together. Uh, you know, you can move to amend to separate if you wanted to. Are the motion makers willing to do that? No. Okay. A motion to separate is always in order under Robert's Rules of Order. Well, it's in order, but it has to Does be voted it, on. Yeah. It's got to be voted to on. Agree. Well, I'll go ahead and make a motion to separate that. that. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call. Okay, Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Pearl. No. Mr. Gannon. Yes. Mr. Argona. No. Mr. Gillahan. Yes. Mrs. Messer. Yes. Motion passes. So we separate them. The first motion will be to waive the sidewalks on the interior of Paula Court. And that motion was made by Mr. Gillaham and supported by Mr. Pearl. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. No. Uh, Mr. Cannon. No. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer, yes, motion passes to waive. The second on the inside. motion is also made by Mr. Gillaham, supported by Mr. Pearl, and that is to install the sidewalks prior to the first C of O on Millar Road. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer, no. Motion passes. Thank you. Item two, site development plan, smart. Macomb Terminal Upgrades. This commission has made review of plans for site development and consideration of grant of certain variants by the Clinton Township Board of Appeals and finds the plans are in compliance with the requirements of Clinton Township Planning and Zoning Code and those of other replying reviewing agents recognizing that the engineering analysis is for preliminary purposes only. We hereby make recommendation for approval of the site development development plans as stamped and dated December 10th, 2018. This section was approved by unanimous vote and copies of the plans and pertinent data of record are enclosed for your information and file. This matter was petitioned by Mr. John Hertel, Smart 535 Griswold Street, Suite 600, Detroit, Michigan, as represented by Mr. Michael Walter of Smart 15 Mile Road, Clinton Township, Michigan. We submit this proposal for consideration and would appreciate advisement of your determination. Sincerely, Denise Trombley, Secretary for the Clinton Township Planning Commission. Are there any comments or questions? Move, move to approve. So, Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, and, please. 
just if I could, um, our a community liaison is here from SMART um, in the audience. I don't know if he... He's camera shy. Uh, <laughs> he's camera shy. That's funny. <laughs> you go, Fred. <laughs> it's a nice project. You keep your properties up very nicely. Yes. We have yep. a wonderful partnership with you with our senior buses here in the community. Uh, we're lucky to have you. And thank goodness the millage passed. Okay, you got to use the microphone for your yeah, talk. No, Mr. Uh, see, he doesn't sound like he's shy. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Mike Walter, Smart Transportation. I'm the Facilities Project Manager. Tonight, I got Tom Lacrosse, Patrick Hare from HRC, and everybody knows Fred Barbrat, Macomb yeah. Terminal Ombuds person. Thank you. Thanks for keeping the place up so nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, does anyone have any questions, Mr. Keys? Just quickly, I saw that in the documentation that you do have some landscape, landscaping improvements planned. Are you able to go over any of those at this time? I'm sure, do you guys want to come up? We we can kind of show you on our drawing if you. That would be great. Inside, we have a little pavilion area here, another one here, and trees and landscaping in some green space areas on the inside of the space. Perfect, I and mean, it's very much appreciated. Uh, I live in that area, and obviously that, that area can get very busy at times, whether it's just after work or when the buses are coming through. Sure. Um, and I think you guys have always done a good job of that, so I appreciate any improvement to the landscaping that you guys are willing to make. Absolutely, and it's getting all new pavement throughout the whole mm -hmm. site. Now, your drivers, are they encouraged to drive on to 15 mile to get to the other two exit and entrances, or is most of the driving internal within your property? Um, kind of a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, pull out gets a little crazy, mm -hmm. um, you know, early in the morning. Um, so to answer your question, it does a little bit of both goes okay. on there. Yeah, the only reason I mentioned it, it does get a little chaotic there, and I, like I said, I think you guys do a good job of managing that, but that's one thing I'm always mindful of. We've had a couple of recent developments going on 15 mile of other trucking companies and whatnot, and those are always questions that I'm asking to make sure that we're keeping up on that. Right. We're also creating more staging area in the back. Okay. It used to be just more of a bus storage. Now this is actually drivable pavement and staging area, okay. so it allows them to potentially bring more people off the roads and stuff. Well, let, lastly, I just want to compliment you guys, too, on another product that you have, which is that text alert system. I use the smart bus from time to time to get into Mount Clemens, and I know that was down for quite a while, and now it is just picked up, and it's something that's very convenient. I'm getting texts on a weekly basis of where, where my route's at and if any changes have been made or how many buses are actually on it, so it's, it's a, a great tool. Appreciate yep, Thank you. Further comments? Floor is open for a motion. I mean, we have okay. one in Roll call. a second. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keys. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item three is conditional rezoning from RML multiple family to B1 neighborhood business. This commission has made review and held public hearing on the proposal for a conditional rezoning of the above reference land is located southwest of Shook Road, west of Harper, from RML multiple family residential to B1 neighborhood for the stated purpose of development with a massage therapy facility. 
a healing garden. We hereby make recommendation for approval of the conditional rezoning as presented subject to the approval of the conditional rezoning agreement by the township attorney and receiving a signed executed waiver from the Department of Public Works for the dumpster. This action was appro approved by the board uh, by unanimous vote and a copy of the notice of the May 12, 2016 public hearing containing legal description and a general location sketch of the land in question is attached for information and file. This matter was petitioned by Ms. Rhonda Lakeup Ochoa. I'm sorry if I said that. Is that good? Thank you. 34345 Jefferson Avenue, Harrison Township, Michigan 48045 is represented by Mr. Eric Heiderer um, of Clinton Township. We submit this proposal for consideration. Sincerely, Denise Trombley, Secretary for the Clinton Township Planning Commission. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions of board members? Yeah. So, so I was I was somewhat confused by this one. So I'm looking at this uh, the uh, minutes from the planning commission. Um, I'm seeing west um, of Harper on Shook Road. I wasn't sure. I've lived here all my life. I wasn't sure that Shook actually did go west of Harper. And so then I pulled up a Google map. I saw the three buildings. There's a house. There's a garage. There's a sh almost a shed. And then I'm looking at this, and I'm saying... Um, there's a nonprofit here, there's a wellness center, and there's an actual business. And I need some clarification as to exactly what we're talking about here. Got it. Uh, Eric Heider, so. Polyarch 44045, representing uh, the owners. Uh, yes, you, you see kind of a garage, a shed, kind of an outbuilding, and kind of a house. Yes. Uh, Rhonda bought it to have a massage therapy, which is more geared to cancer patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to renovate those three buildings, as you can kind of see here, as massage therapy rooms. Um, and, you know, at that point, she has a business, a successful business in Harrison Township, which is really one house. We're expanding into this area. Uh, we're developing the new parking lot, uh, renovating the house, and renovating the three buildings into massage therapy rooms for, as I said, cancer patients. So it looks a little more rough right now because it is. It looks really rough looks right rough, now. But I mean, you can see we're I mean, going to renovate big, all three buildings. Um, big dips in the parking lot. I mean, yeah. oh, you know, these buildings yeah. are not something that is conducive oh, they're for not, they're not. A, 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 right now they're a, not. a wellness center. I mean, that's, you know. Yes. I mean, I understand this is the zoning issue, but um, it's, it, it's hard to conceptualize mm -hmm. how you're going to turn that into something that um, makes sense for that type of work. So yeah. I definitely agree with you, and that's why we need the rezoning first in order to get the permits to continue to build and make it look nice and presentable. Um, a healing garden, what we do is we do free massages for people going through cancer, MS, and other types of chronic illnesses. Um, it's like a twofold, okay? Our profit portion of the company is called a healing touch massage therapy. And then for each person who comes to get a massage, so much of that money goes towards a healing garden in order to support uh, the nonprofit portion. So we don't ask for donations or anything. It comes off from the, the portion profit of it. It's called a self-sufficient nonprofit. So in other words, the people that are the customers of your business, a certain percentage of those proceeds goes towards the, the nonprofit aspect of things correct Would that is then going to try to um, help those patients with cancer or ms or their conditions correct okay all right and um you, you know i mean obviously so you run a business currently in harrison township correct uh are doing this type of work and you can conceptualize these buildings as you know purposeful for this absolutely absolutely we started in harrison township with just a house that we converted into a business and some gazebos as well that has um, morning glories that are engulfing. It, it's, a, it's a healing garden area. So you got tons of flowers. It, it's, it's arborvitaes all around the area and it's gonna have fountains and things like that. And that's what we presented to the planning board right. and it was totally approved regarding that. We had pictures and stuff as well. And each building has, as you uh, three separate massage rooms. The, the garage area that we're converting has, has, three, four. has four rooms. Uh, the one shed that's the long version has three rooms also with the corridor and then the main building 
as uh, two massage rooms, which is kind of the check-in with your bathrooms, your your uh, kitchen, and your kind of your check-in area. And what's happening with the house? The house is going to be the maintenance for the the whole property. And yeah. and storage. Yeah. Is that receiving some type of facelift as well? Oh yes. That's oh yeah. Okay. It's it's already yes. Yeah, it's, it's receiving a facelift, but we cannot use it according to the Planning Commission because the doors and everything are so small, but it's a 1927 or 23 uh, farmhouse. So in rest, retrospect, we didn't want to tear down that building either because it's, it's a homey looking building. So. Yeah. All right, Mr. Pearl. Thank you. Well, this is a conditional rezoning and it can only be allowed for this usage. Correct. Correct. Mr. Thompson. That's correct. Yes. So basically, we're going to have to see a site plan of what they're going to do with it later on, or is he required to do specified as in part of the contract? The, there are uh, site plans of record. There's a site plan and a landscape plan and elevations as well. So those would be part of the agreement, would be, um, you know, attachments to it. So, so they wouldn't would be required to, to comply further. with all of that before they get a certificate of occupancy. Okay. It's all Thank part of it's all part of it. But that's part of the same approval that's happening tonight. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. May, may we can you add to that motion that uh, it's subject to them fully executing and the recording of the uh, conditional zoning agreement? Yes. Thanks. Is there a second? Support. Second. S supported by Mr. Gillaham. A roll call, please. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Gilliam? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes and good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> okay, item four, request approval for SDM transfer with Sunday sales permit. Dear board members, applicant TJJM Inc. located at 33452 Harper <laughs> Avenue, Clinton Township, Michigan 4835 has successfully fulfilled the requirements per the building department and fire department as well as the police background check and payments for the application fees necessary to acquire a liquor license transfer. Based on this fulfillment of requirements, TJJM Inc. requests approval from this honorable board. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Kim Meltzer. And you're your approving of this, Mrs. Meltzer? Yes, this is, they're all in line. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Support. Thank and you. if I could, I just I'll mention, you know, this was the site of the Moonlight Party Store, I believe. And um, uh, that was a very, very tragic uh, accident that occurred there. And so uh, it's been shut down for a very long time. And um, we're pleased to see somebody making a go of it. But I want to encourage you to be careful. That's not them. Oh, Thank it's you. not them? No. It's not? No. Oh, I, OK. How did I get that wrong? No, 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 mm -hmm. no, no, no. I'm saying in the audience, if you're looking at Oh, okay. People in the audience. Oh, so okay. So, you're right. So, yeah, yeah, so this yeah. address you're, is the... You are right, the, yes. But the Moonlight Party store. you were looking okay. at. So. And are the petitioners here? Then? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Yes. We, Mr. I made the motion. Pearl yeah, and Mr. Gillaham? It's been moved and supported. Okay. Okay. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item five has been deleted. Item six, request approval of one of the three remaining township quota licenses. Dear board members, applicant Kebab Village LLC located at 39890 Garfield Road, Clinton Township, Michigan 48038 is requesting your approval of ownership for one of three remaining quota liquor licenses. Kebab Village LLC has successfully fulfilled the requirements per the building department and fire department as well as the police background check and payment of the application fees necessary to require this request. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Kim Meltzer. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions of board members? Are there petitioners here? If you don't mind coming to the podium, please. This has been a place where there's been a number of different uh, businesses. That's correct. Uh, located by Freddy's in a strip center. We have three licenses left. The licenses are designed to help us bring businesses into the community. They're enticements. And whether the board thinks that this would be an enticement for them to come in, into the community, that's up to the board to decide. But I would like to reserve some of these licenses for Gratiot and Grossbeck Highway. Mrs. Meltzer. Thank you. 
Um, so this petition is, or this request is different than the other liquor licenses that we've um, approved in the past. So for instance, the one that we had just approved earlier, that was not a quota license. Those were allocated licenses from the state, and we have um, quite a bit of those. Those are off-premise licenses. Uh, but this one is different um, in that it is actually a tavern license, which counts against our quota, as Mr. Cannon stated. So the concern there is that um, these are tools used for economic development. Um, we usually look at, like we've done in the past, um, it was Pete and Mary's too, um, was a small establishment. We ended up giving them a Class C quota license based on their historical commitment to the community, their longevity, and their, their ability to ride out the economic storms. Um, and um, in this case, we don't really know the applicant, we don't know the record, and Although a very nice young man um, I had a chance to meet, I'm, I, I don't know that this is the best um, way for us to attract or utilize this license to attract business. And there is, you have to remember this is personal property. So even if the person decides if this business is not successful, that does not mean the license comes back to us. It would go with, with the owner. Mr. Keyes? Yeah, I'll make a motion to deny the request. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Are they, you don't want to ask them if they want to say anything? Could you We're have... just here in case you have any questions. Okay. Um, she is absolutely right. It is a new business. He's just starting off his business. Um, and um, it's not perhaps as nearly as large as some of the other businesses that can possibly employ more people than he may. He does plan on employing, uh, I'd say, eight to ten people, is what you told me. Uh, he's given this a real go. Like you said, there's been a few different restaurants in there. Um, we even discussed... He would not be opposed to the possibility of, being that it is personal property, giving the property back to the city if it doesn't work out for whatever reason. Hopefully we don't want to think of that situation, but it's not his intent to get a license, things don't work out, puts that license on the market and sells it. He wants to give it a real go at this location. And this would only be an, uh, an additional tool, if you will, in his, in his toolbox to help get some additional business. Um, he's not asking for the full Class C license, it's the tavern license, which allows him to serve the beer and the wine, and that's it. And he just figures that'd be an additional extra draw to his type of business, as opposed to, you know, just every other business out there that's not doing this. Um, Mr. Gilham? So, so I, I guess the first thing I'd say, it doesn't hurt to ask. Right, but um, I think um, you know it's been said, and, and and it needs to sort of be restated is that you know these these are available on the open market. Um, you know they do have a cost; they have economic benefit, um, and you know I just don't see enough economic development amount that we're able to leverage using this um, to justify the granting of a free a liquor license, a quota license, if you will. And so, um, you know, I would be in support of the denial of the request, but um, the agreement is sort of a gentleman's agreement, you know, that if we were to grant it to you, you'd give it back to us if things don't work out. That technically can't be required in law. We actually did right. do that successfully with the Palm Palace when we granted them uh, a free a quota license. It's a reversion clause, considered and, a reversion clause. And we put a reversion clause in there. Luckily, we were able to enforce it, but they're very, very difficult to enforce. And so as a result of that, I think we need to establish a sort of a bigger, more established track record here. Thank you. Further comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? No. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Take Item 7, presentation of PASER study for township local roads. Dear members of the board, the 2018 payment service, Pavement Surface Evaluation and Rating PAZER Study of Township Local Roads has been completed. Scott Chabot, P.E. Anderson, Exton and Westrick, Inc., Magda DeFranco, GIS Specialist, and I will be presenting the results <coughs> at the January 14th board meeting. Sincerely, Mary Bednar, Director of Public <coughs> Services. Thank you. We knew our roads were bad, and mm -hmm. the last time we did a study of this nature was 10 years ago. We applied for and received a grant from SEMCOG 
and just recently completed the survey. This is the first that's being released to the to anyone, and we thought the board should have first opportunity to see it. Tomorrow morning, it will be prominently displayed on our township webpage, and we will have a presentation, short presentation, and we will have uh, not a synopsis of how bad the roads are, but you can go on and look. You can see what your road looked like 10 years ago on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the best, and we categorize them poor, fair, and good, and we don't have many good. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Um, real quick, I'll just give a, another just a quick background related to the study and what the PAYS it really is. Um, so in November of 2018, Anderson X and Westrick did perform a PAZER study for the local roads within the township. Uh, PAZER stands for Pavement, Surface, Evaluation, and Rating. Uh, this is a condition assessment tool that ranks uh, pavement assets based on their structural condition. And the PAZER, uh, the, I guess the condition of the roads are measured on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being in a failed condition and 10 being in excellent condition. Uh, the PAZER is a uh, widely accepted by local, state, and federal ag uh, agencies in the management, preparation, and planning of capital improvement projects uh, for primarily public uh, type uh, works. Uh, the township has, mo the roads are in the township are owned and maintained by the Macomb County Department of Roads. Uh, the De Department of Roads does not do PAZER uh, studies of the local roads. They do, however, um, as we'll present later, do the primary roads every two years. But as I noted before, the local roads they have not done. And as Mr. Cannon alluded to earlier, the last time any of the local roads have been evaluated using the PAZER system was in 2008. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Cannon also noted that there was a grant that SEMCOG was uh, giving to communities that Clinton Township received, which um, a AEW utilized to do the PAZER study. And we were able to perform all of that work within the, the grant amount to basically evaluate 203 miles of the local roads within the township. And uh, so we've given this data over to SEMCOG, and SEMCOG has accepted it. And uh, it's pretty much ready as um, it's presented today, be ready to be shown to the public. And with that, uh, they have uh, Magda DeFranco here from uh, at the GIS uh, department and also Ms. Bednar to give a couple examples or go through some of the uh, dashboard items that we have created um, based on that study. Thank you, Scott. So the first thing I'd like to do is give major kudos to Magda for putting together this dashboard. Um, when we asked her to take this data and put it together, um, I didn't know what to expect, but I knew it would be quality. Um, this is above and beyond what I expected um, because she was able to put the 2008 and 2018 side by side so people can look and be able to compare 10 years and what happened in 10 years. Um, so real quickly, I'm going to just give you an overview of what's on this dashboard and then what's also on the different tabs so that the public, when they go to look or when if you want to go look, you kind of have a kind of a guideline of how to do that. So the bottom line is you can look at your road in 2008 and or 2018. Correct. So if you just want to see what it's like today, you can. Correct. So real quick. Um, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, in 2008, we have the PAZER ratings. What those PAZER ratings tell you is 21.4% uh, of our roads that were considered poor in 2008. What poor means is it's rated a 1 through a 3. So the PAZER rating state study is basically a 1 through a 10, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. So we had 21.4% were poor, 48.13% were fair, which is a 4 or a 5, 23.9% is good, which is a 6 or a 7, and 6.51% was it's considered very good, which is an 8 through a 10. Now if you go to 2018, look at the same pie chart, what you have is 
45.4% is poor, 40.15% is fair, 10.01% is good, and 4.44% is very good. So you can see that in 10 years our roads have definitely decreased in their conditions. Now if you look also by those pie charts, you're going to see on there it says miles on the map is 192 miles, 0.17, in 88, or 2008, and 102.98. So that takes into account new development and roads that were maybe were gravel that got paved and so forth. So you can see we added about 10 miles of road in 10 years. The right below that is the total miles that we did our study on the local roads. Now remember, this is local roads. These are not our primary main roads. So these are mainly subdivision roads is what we're looking at. And then on the bottom, on that red, is it says um, miles of poor, very poor, or failed roads. In 2008 was 41 miles versus the 92 miles in 2018. Now those two bottom ones, will not change as we scroll in and do examples for you. That way you always have the, we have 202 miles of road or 203 miles of road, and you can see how many are poor. So as you scroll in, you can say, oh, and in this subdivision, nine of those miles are part of that 92 miles. And it kind of gives you a comparison to the rest of the township. So with that being said, let's roll in to Elmira. Now I randomly, I'm, I'm going to use the word randomly picked four roads. It really wasn't random. I had reasons behind them. For example, Elmira, we did an SAD in 2013. So in 2008, Elmira is red. That is actually, you can't see it on the screen, but that's a two. In 2013, the residents did an SAD. And in 2018, so five years after the SAD and the road going in, it is now rated a nine, which so it went from poor to very good. If we scroll in next to Thornton and Tessens, as we all remember, that was an SAD from last year that was completed just recently in the fall. And I'm going to preface that it's not complete at this point, but it's pretty much almost there type idea. So on Thornton Tessens in 2008, it was rated a three on average. In 2018, now that the work was completed, this PASER study happened after they did the initial pavement work. It is now rated a 10. But more importantly, look at the rest of the neighborhood. You can see in 2008, there was quite a few roads that were good and fair. And yet, in 2018, those same roads are now the other uh, thing I'd like to point out to is if you zoom in on South Nunley, and this is actually kind of a sneak preview to item 16 on our board agenda. On South Nunley, we are looking to do a water main replacement project. And we were able to talk to the Department of Roads and said, hey, look, this road is a two and a three. Can we do a partnership and help pay? And so instead of just putting the water main and having half the road done, can we do the whole road? And hopefully when we get to 16, we can talk about that. But we're hoping to get partnership with this board and with the uh, Department of Roads. But you can see in 10 years what happens. Now, go back to that little number. I forgot to go back to the... So on that screen right now, what you see shows that there is 4.54 miles shown on that screen. So you notice the two, 203 miles, I'm rounding up, didn't change. But as you roll in and out, that, that upper number will change based on what you're seeing. Hmm. Now if we go over to Cimarron and Bayham, <coughs> I wanted to show you, in 2008, it was mainly rated twos and threes, again, red, poor. Now it's rated a seven after we participated with the Department of Roads on that overlay project that we did in 2017. Now remember that project was not a full reconstruction, it was just an overlay, so that, you know, now seven is the high end of good, eight is very good, but you can see that it's starting to deteriorate a little bit, but obviously improved in 10 years because of that project. 
the other thing that you can note here is Picton Court. And Magda's actually zooming in as we talk. And you can see how this can very easily, you can just pick on it, you can zoom. It's kind of the same functions that you have um, in other software that people are comfortable with and use. So Picton Court actually um, is an SAD that will have work done and completed that we're doing a water main on that um, in the spring. And then we also have Kent Vale, the rest of Bayham, which we call Bayham Court because it's just the court portion. Um, <coughs> Allison and Cobham are right now, they have an SAD in. It looks like they have about 60%. Don't quote me on that number, but it's, it's over the 50. And we did submit that for the county consideration for their county subdivision program, which would be a 50-50 match. We're waiting on uh, hearing from the county shortly. And then we'll be able to move forward, pop, keeping our fingers crossed with an SAD with that 50-50 match. So that kind of shows you that area and what our money can do and so forth with the overlays and so forth. And then the last area I want to zoom in is on Rivergate subdivision. Rivergate subdivision is, uh, again, looking at 2008 versus 2018. You can see in the pie charts below that, you know, the red area got quite a bit bigger in 10 years. You can see that the fair, which is uh, the orange, got a little bit smaller. And the same thing with the yellow and green, actually, it looks like kind of stayed the yellow got smaller. Got yellow, smaller. yeah, yellow got smaller. And then green is about the same. But remember, last year we participated um, with the concrete program in front of um, Cherokee Elementary where they did the concrete replacement in front of it. So we did some work in there too. So that kind of shows both. Um, but you can isolate these, using this, you can isolate the poor roads. So you can see in 2008, you can see how many were poor. Oh, that's cool. That's a, that's a great visual. Okay. But in 2018, how many are poor? Now you can also include the fair roads and see how many were fair in 2008 versus in 2018. Now there is something on here that right now you can't tell. Fair is fours and fives. Okay? We can isolate to see how many are the fours and how many are the fives. The problem we have is, is that the majority of them are fours, which means in the not near future, they're going to probably become threes. So now going back to the overall township, we looked at the fours. Right now, we're at 45% is poor. In the 40% that are fair, 68% of those are fours. So in the not near, you know, in the near future, those fours are going to become threes, which is going to put us more like 70% of our roads are poor. So, um, and then if you zoom in to, if you turn all everything back on and zoom in in front of Cherokee, you can see that that's where they did that concrete project where when the, con uh, the county came to us and asked to participate with them and the focus was so many people drive in that location because of the school right there. So that's where the focus was to do the concrete program and you can see that it's updated. You Mr. Burrow? I was going to go through the other tabs but it, I can ask, answer questions at this point well, real quick. You want to go through the other tabs? Fine. Okay. So then we have four other tabs up there. The next tab is the main roads. So these are the primary roads that SEMCOG and the Department of Roads do every two years. And what you're going to see is when you look at the main roads, uh, let me look at my notes real quick. Or maybe I should just look at the screen. 45% of the main roads in Clinton Township are in poor condition. And 17% are in fair condition. Okay. Every two years they do an update. So as we do water main projects and if we're working with them, you'll see an update on it. Like Beaconsfield, when we did the sewer project, 
we ended up going in and partnering and being able to do the, the road on Beaconsfield. So those, um, we don't pay for that, and that's data that gets SEMCOG does with the Department of Roads, but it's only on the primary roads. Our local roads, we have to initiate, and it's usually in every 10 year is what we tend to look at. Mm -hmm. The next tab is our private versus public. So we get calls all the time, do I live on a public road, do I live on a private road? So this tab will show which ones are condos and are private, which are the public and which are the private roads. The other thing that's nice about this is um, these pub, you know, when we get these, when we ask these questions, we can quickly go this. You've, this has been uh, checked with the county records yes. as well. So this will help with being able to answer people's questions because people just don't know. But remember, public doesn't mean township owned. Public means it's a county road that our residents. So that's kind of important is public doesn't mean township. Public means county road. And then private is the individual condo associations or whoever lives on that street. The last, the fourth tab is road projects within uh, the township that we participate in. These are going to be your S in the last 10 years. So these are your SADs. For example, it would be like Elmira, Santa Ana, Santa Barbara, Charter Oaks. But it also includes the roads that we have partnered with the Department of Roads. So your Greenfield, your Cass Avenue, your 19 Mile Road. So it shows both, but it kind of shows what we've been able to do in the last 10 years. And then our very last tab is our resource tab. And this tab has an overall map that people would like to print it out. It kind of, you know, a PDF, it makes it easy for them. But it also has the links to SEMCOG. So if you want to see the other years, um, <coughs> the major ones, go to the SEMCOG website. It allows, you know, it explains what PASER is. It explains how it's, uh, you know, the evaluation system and so forth. So it's kind of our resources. And, mm -hmm. It's a good good. place that people need to know a little bit more. And I think that is it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Pearl, you have the floor? Yeah, a great job. I mean, the, the uh, residents should see, obviously, a lot of us know that drive the community a lot, what the conditions were. But this really gives uh, zoom in on everything. So I appreciate this. Um, the study, the grant that we got for the study and the work that you put in, doing this, putting this together. Thank you. And the residents should really be able to see how bad the roads are. And I hope um, that we can get a millage going again. I also hope this, the state government can send some money our way uh, to get some of this work done. We should send them a copy of this or maybe uh, send them the link to this <laughs> so they can uh, review it. I hope with the new governor there in place that uh, she can convince the legislature to let some money go our way to get this work done. This is a horrible condition that's mm -hmm. got to be corrected. It's just going to get worse. You see in 10 years what's happened. And uh, with all the roads that we've gotten approval to do, it's not many compared to what needs to be done. Correct. So thank you for all the work, and mm -hmm. I'm glad this will be up for the residents to see. Thank you. If I could add one more thing, um, we actually have... On the website will be also kind of little blurbs of what the different tabs mean hmm. so that the residents, so we just went through them all, but the residents could also look back at this drawing and say, oh, if I tap this, it's going to do the, you know, and kind of help them, kind of a, a interactive direction. Right. Guide. Yeah, guide. Help navigate it. Mr. Gillingham? So, all right, so just some logistical questions on navigating the website when you said you went through tabs you went through some different neighborhoods one of which was the south of 16 mile road um, east of Gratiot or west of Harper um, and then you did the Rivergate sub um, uh, can you go back to the Rivergate sub no problem just so you know those aren't tabs that's that's actually in the roads tab. so you can tabs go anywhere you want not correct. just the areas to where you've designated correct. right you can go, okay you could you give okay. me an address you so you can put an address in okay give me a street you know you could say horseshoe you could say um 
you know, Seattle Lane. Seattle Lane, yeah. you could. <laughs> but you can also yeah. pan over just like you do when you're like in Google. Got it. You can zoom okay. in and zoom out and pan. Right. You can do, Seattle. it's just if you're familiar with Google right. and like your Google mm -hmm. Maps, mm -hmm. it's just like that. Um, or you can enter an address. I only had the bookmarks for really the, this for the presentation. presentation. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, but, but, uh, nice patch, the, the website is fully integrated. So, you know, just boom. Right, right now, if search you give, wherever you are, want. Are we basically. online right now? Mm -hmm. Are we online? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me another street in Clinton Township. Um, Aldo Court. Alt Aldo <laughs> Court. Okay. Aldo? Yep, Aldo Court. She's typing it in right Wind now. You can out, right. barely see it, but it's up there. And what will happen is it will zoom in. To both, so Aldo Court. I'm look. I got to look at the screen. Cause <coughs> in 2008 was a six, mm -hmm. and in 2018 is a four. So you can click on any street segment, and it will give you all the information for both years. It doesn't matter which side you're on. I can do the same thing on 2018 side. Okay, and so all right. Um, so then, the other I think thing that is uh, um, astounding is the fact that in ten years we have only ten new miles of road in Clinton Township. It has been quite a bit of development. Yes. We went through a global economic recession, um, but uh, public roads. Right. Lo public local roads. Right. So a lot of the development that we have seen has been private roads, actually. Right. right. Okay. The so one that so we're last, this this afternoon, Paula Court is a private road. So if we see a ranking up there that does not have a color associated with it, it in in a sense means that it is a uh, private. a um, private right. road. So road. let's do Paula Court. It will tell you that it's a private co private road, so it does not have okay. a rating available to it. Okay. So uh, back to the Rivergate, um, just real quick, because there was an area that showed no color um, on the left in 2008. So to the 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 left of that, yep. See where it's yellow? Mm -hmm. No. Well, so so to the left, there's no color next to Rivergate to the west of it. Um, and then all of a sudden in 2018 there is color. Does that mean that's a relatively new development? Right, so that's part, that, that's part so of the that's, tree, okay. and so it was not right, evaluated okay. because I, I don't know. It didn't exist. Right, okay. It was like It was still under construction, actually. It had right. started construction, but it, was, but it was not evaluated. Okay, so we have an area within Partridge Creek there that is already orange yes. from the time that it was actually constructed. Yeah. So yeah. part of Partridge Creek Boulevard is orange? So basically now, remember, it's a five. Yep. It's a five. It. Okay. okay. And remember now, these, this is an evaluation, and it's based on, it's, it has some subjectivity to it because the evaluators now, they're trained, and they're taught by MDOT what is considered, okay? So you may see it might, like one person might call it a five, and one person might call it a six, and one person might call it a four. They're not going to call it a five if it's a one. And they're mm -hmm. not going to call it a five if it's a ten. But there is a little bit of subjectivity in there. Um, okay. But yes. So this study was conducted by AEW, correct? Yes, uh, and they're sort okay. of IT people. So they, so they went out and either had the people that were trained or they went out and got the training to then drive all these roads and then create this so ranking. Actually, how we did it was one of our AEW uh, employees drove two of AEW's employees. Um, that's, we did that, A, because our, you know, our people know our roads the best. Mm -hmm. um, you had to drive it, I want to say, 10 miles. Mary, can you make sure that you're speaking in the mic so the people that are watching can hear? You had to, you, they had to drive it at eight miles an hour, so it's a very oh. slow. Wow. You can imagine how long it took to get through the township. I think so the they, Google uh, um, you know, a map people probably drive faster than that. I so think that's, they do, too. <laughs> that's good. So they, were, they drive very slowly, and then there's segments in there. So like looking at the Partridge Creek, from the cul-de-sac to the cul-de-sac is one segment. So yeah. during that segment, the, a person who has been trained by MDOT will look at it, look and compare it, and then say, it's a five. And, yeah. and they work together, the two evaluators working together to be able to, but in the meantime, the driver isn't evaluated. That was my, you know, one of our guys 
who um, isn't doing evaluation. He's just making sure he's driving slow enough. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, uh, is there specific um, sort of uh, things of deterioration, sort of, uh, um, you know, a categories of a deterioration that would put it as a, a four versus a five? What's the, again, the, subject, the subjective nature of this? And I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot here, but, and I'm getting to a, a certain point, but, um, you know, can anybody speak to that issue? I well, mean, there's a training that you can go to, and we thought about going to it, but we weren't av available because when she says five, she wants to know what a five is. Right. But you haven't been through the training yet. Yep. But all of his people have been. So as a civil engineer, I mean, I can tell you, you know, yes, this one's worse. I mean, just think of back when we had the Thornton and Tessons and they were saying their road is in perfectly great condition. I'm like, uh, no. You know, unfortunately. Um, so there spider is, cracking, deteriorating right, cracking. at the joints. As as is, you know, I mean, that's where I guess which, I'm going with this right, type of. I don't know what the difference between if it's spider cracking, what number that is and so forth, okay. because I didn't take the training. Um, but that's exactly what they're looking at. Okay. They're looking at the spider cracking. They're looking at, uh, you know, Different deterioration. Um, they're looking. Um, they they when they drive it, they don't know if the road was done three years ago, or if it was done thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. All they know is what they're seeing in the field. They don't have that previous data. Yeah. So uh, we have two people here from AEW. Um, another person from AEW, I actually heard speak at an event, and he talked about this issue of ASR. Um, uh, alkali silica reaction. I was blown away and afterwards I said, do you have anything on this? He says, yes, I have a white paper. Um, sent it to me. Fascinating stuff. Basically, um, they switched the sand deposits and from uh, one type of sand to another type of sand that had more silica. Everything that was built in the state of Michigan between like 1995 to 2005 is deteriorating at the joints. One of the and things that concrete. we're going to hear... It's concrete. Concrete, okay. So one of the things that we're going to hear when we put this up there is they're using inferior materials. Mm -hmm. um, they're the, the state's bidding this wrong. You know, there's all kinds of these preconceived notions that people have, but one of the things that this doesn't answer is why are these roads in such a state of deterioration? One is age, but two is sort of these sort of other factors. Um, how, do we, how do we get information out there about that? Well, first of all, I mean, it is age. Um, is one, you know, um, I actually had, not too long ago, um, someone say to me, I can't believe Rivergate's having problems. That's a new subdivision. Mm -hmm. And I said, it was built in the oh, early yeah. 80s. Yep. Yeah. That's 35 years old. Right. That's not yeah. new. And these roads um, are 35 years old. You know, indeed. so, um, yeah. so how do you, you know, so first of all, the age is, is a, you know, just like your roof, mm -hmm. your roof starts to fall apart. No one wants to fix the roof, but you know what, eventually you have to put a new roof in. Roads have a lifetime too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what's out there. As far as, you know, the other thing is people talk about well, when they put it in in the 70s, they put it in the 70s with the best available information. Mm -hmm. Over the years, our cross sections have changed. And now, I mean, in fact, I have, <laughs> I have different developers come in and go, I can't believe it. I'm going to make it a private road because it doesn't have to be as thick. And I kind of laugh and say, well, actually, we, our private roads meet the same requirements. We, we're just because you're a private road, you're not going to put in a, a thinner, OK? But you know what? Over the years, that thickness has changed, mm -hmm. and those requirements have changed. So, yeah, in the 60s, it wasn't the same requirement, um, but it was based on what we knew at the time. But you can't hold the 60s requirement to something that we knew just learned in 2010. Well, the other, you know, issues that were pointed out in the memo is the mesh has to be placed at least two inches below the surface because um, concrete is a porous surface and um, it's going to retain water. The water's going to seep into it. And if it's not, you know, if the mesh isn't put low enough, then it's going to, you know, accelerate the deterioration of the mesh, which then holds that concrete together. Um, the other issue that was talked about is not enough aeration in the concrete to allow for the expansion. Um, but I know a lot of civil engineers who've had this issue. 
on their own personal property. So and right. you think they would know better, right? right. But unfortunately, it's, it is, um, you know, uh, all, you know, concrete and, you know, it, it does, it, there has to be a mix and a match. Mm -hmm. um, and they thought they could use a different product, a different thing. Okay. So we're putting this information onto our website. Um, it's a great tool for our residents to use. Um, but what our response continues to be is we're not getting enough money from Macomb County. And Macomb County's not getting enough right. money from Lansing because the funding formula is based upon lane miles versus, um, I'm sorry, it's based upon... Linear miles. Uh, the uh, amount of miles versus the amount of lane miles, right? Right. right. Yes. So, so still not under the township's jurisdiction, but we're stepping up. If we were to take a look at a PASER study from uh, 2008 to 2018 in Macomb or Shelby or, um, you know, uh, Chesterfield Township, um, how many miles of new roads do you think we're going to... Um, you know, have out there. Um, I don't know if they've done PASER. I don't know. Yeah. I can't answer that. No. But we're in competition for those same dollars. So all of that growth, we put in a total of 10 new miles of roads. So the argument to the Department of Roads continues to be and has to be we need a focus on repairing our existing roads rather than going out and building new roads and contributing to further sprawl that we are, in a sense, having to subsidize. We shouldn't be turning two-lane roads in the north part of Macomb County into five-lane roads. We need to be focused on repairing the aging infrastructure of the people that have been paying taxes in this community for um, the 35 years in the case of a Rivergate or in the case of Clintondale neighborhoods, sometimes 70 years. Yeah. So, uh, but, 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 but um, excellent work, and I think providing this information is a phenomenal resource. And as always, you guys do a great job. So mm -hmm. thank you. Further comments? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. It's you. Bob Hogan, 36755 Bar Street, Clinton Township. Moments ago, Trustee West mentioned the name of the street, Palo Alto. No. Or what? Aldo, Aldo Court. OK. Uh, she most likely lives on it or near it. Anyways, the question was, did she think 10 years ago it was a seven and now it's a four, or doesn't she think it's a four at this time? She really hasn't had any training in that, so unless you have that I don't know about. No. It's, no. it's, pretty, I, it's pretty standard what each level is, but we, we're just not trained in it. No, and then uh, after that, Ms. Bednar was saying, uh, the fours are gonna be threes relatively shortly. The question I had was, does Miss Trustee West think that her road is in poor condition? That's what a four stands for. Well, she's not, four right. is fair. Oh, four is fair? Four, four is four fair. Four is fair, yeah. But, but I do know, actually, I should have said Neville Court, because remember I just told Miss Bednar about an area on Neville Court where people are driving over it and water is coming up. And I said, I think I see a sinkhole in the process. So they're checking into that. But they, that you're exactly right. I was trying to figure out how bad some of this is deteriorating. OK. And the original question was, it was stated it was a 7, and now it's a 4. Does she visually see how it went down almost 50%? Well, over 10 years, probably yes. a little bit every year. Yes. So you, I, you I did do, notice I that do see. deteriorating that rapidly? Uh, well, over 10 years, I do see it deteriorating. Okay, I wouldn't say, yeah, what, correct, yes. Can I, can I just add? If I could just add real quick, um, under resources on the left-hand side where you can go to the SEMTOG, this is actually the manual. So if you want to understand more what a four is and on asphalt road, you can click on that and it'll show you some pictures if you want, right? And if you, and if you want to know more about the concrete, it just, you know, um, if someone wants to dig a little bit deeper. Um, Mrs. Meltzer, then Mr. Pearl. 
And then just to Joey, as you said, Mrs. West, I should say, um, your street is a, is a it's just very it's a court, right? It's is that a court. what it's right? So it's a very small. Where only probably the cars that go on it are the ones that live there. You don't get a lot of traffic, and yet that deterioration happens whether that road is used. Um, because I know there's a lot of argument about, well, they're trucks or the buses or whatever. Right. But each road is designed to ha have a lifespan for a period of time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that more traffic is, means that the roads are, you know, in worse shape. Uh, because in your case, very few, tra you get very little traffic on your street, I would imagine. Uh, right. Other That's than the correct. people that just live That's there. That's correct. Yeah. I do, I, I know I'm going out of, out of turn, right. but <laughs> I do have one question. <laughs> Is that possible? Because when you were saying cul-de-sac to cul-de-sac on Partridge Creek Boulevard, um, and that area is new, I mean, we, we know how old that is. Is that from the trucks, et cetera, doing the building? And is that our residents? Or, you know, are our do dollars coming in to pay for that? Or do we get something from the builders? So if I said called us, it meant roundabout. To roundabout, roundabout is okay. Yeah, but you, um, you said called us. But um, you know, I mean, it could be. It could be the construction. I, this study just tells you the number. It doesn't give you the what caused it. Type okay. Idea. It couldn't. Could be the construction traffic. It could mean the cut through traffic because people go from Partridge Creek Mall to Romeo Plank. It could. You know, I mean, it. It's. I don't know what mm -hmm. caused it. I don't. You know, I. What I can tell you is. That, that's what it was evaluated. Okay. You know, there are a lot of different, you know, I've heard school buses, I've heard garbage trucks, I've heard, you know, I've heard lots of different <laughs> things that could cause it. You know, Mr. Gillum re referenced, you know, that maybe it's a material fit. You know, I mean, right. there's, I've heard lots of things right. that could cause it, the age, um, but I can't, you know, I can't tell you what caused it on that specific. What I can say, though, is that it was rated lower and yeah. kind of want to go like this. Yeah. Mr. It's Burrell? good that they're still yeah, doing construction. You know, Mary, if I remember correctly, majority of roads that were put in in the last 50 years were they didn't have any any sub base to them. They put them on clay. Now you have to put limestone in. It makes a big difference when you undercut your new roads that you're putting in subdivisions. They had to undercut what six inches below and put limestone in. Right. Without that base, all it does is pump, and it cracks. And as traffic goes on there and you go through a freeze-thaw cycles and heavy traffic destroys garbage trucks are the biggest destroyer of residential property is that with the amount of tonnage they're carrying around. So I do know, and I don't know exactly when it changed, um, but I know in the 90s you were putting base in. Um, and I can remember when we dug up Romeo Plank, um, the old county highway engineer said, there's no base under that. Mm -hmm. And I actually went out to look because I couldn't, I, it, as a young engineer at the time, I was kind of like, what? You didn't put a base? I can't believe it. And I went out there and there was no base underneath. Yeah, just like our street that was put in probably 50 years ago on Santa Barbara, Santa Ana, they, they had to, uh, there was no base there. It was just clay. And it wasn't even sand. So, of course, it was cracked. You know, not too many years okay. later. Getting back to the study, mm -hmm. the study showed what we already know, that we have a lot of work to do, and mm -hmm. now you can go take a look at it on our uh, web page. Compare your street to others if you want. We will, and we have another item coming up soon, hopefully get a few more streets in. Now, this new roads doesn't count a road like 19 Mile, or in this case, uh, this summer we had um, Hall Road, several miles put in on Hall Road, because this is local roads that we're talking about. So the second tab, tab, though, yeah. the second tab is the main roads. And those are the main roads that are addressed on the second tab. Yep. Do you want to accept the report? Uh, motion to receive and file. So moved. Support. Thank you. And again, we encourage folks to take a look at it. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 8, the 2019 Hardship Exemption Guidelines and Application. Dear Honorable Board Members, attached, please find the 2019 Hardship Exemption Guidelines and Application that requires Township Board approval. If you have any questions regarding this matter, please do not hesitate to contact me. Respectfully submitted, James Alrod, Assessor. 
And what this is, is done annually by our assessment department. They get this from the federal government. It's a dollar amount put off by the federal government for each person in a family unit. There has been a slight increase if you have only one person in your family. You have an additional $80 that you have that would be added on to the poverty guideline. And if you were up to eight persons in your household, it would be $1,060. So it is somewhat prorated. And applications for the border review for lower income individuals are also included in this packet. But this is just an annual uh, thing that Mr. Elrod puts out. Move to approve. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item nine is sale of township owned lot on Stepnitz. Dear Mr. Gillaham, enclosed, please find a proposed quick claim deed. It will need to be executed by Mr. Cannon and Ms. Meltzer, witnessed and notarized. My suggestion is before you undertake doing that, you have a QCD reviewed by Habitat for Humanity. Should you have any questions or need any further, uh, anything further, please feel free to contact me. Uh, we remain very truly yours, John Dolan uh, from York Dolan and Tomlinson. Thank attorneys. you, and thank you, Mr. Dolan and Mr. Gillaham, for the extra work you put in on this project. It was basically a labor of love. <laughs> so, and, and, and if I could, Mr. Cannon, just uh, to mention, Habitat has been doing really phenomenal work. This is a veteran-build uh, home, and uh, they've had uh, contractors and groups of veterans out there building uh, this home. And um, it was simply, I think, an oversight from previous uh, uh, folks that had been working on this, and um, it's something that we need to get... Uh, corrected. We have a veteran um, close to being ready to move in, and so we want to get this property transferred over there. It's uh, a $99 transfer, so in a sense, a donation to Habitat. Move to approve. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item 10 is introduction of Township Ordinance 448, which is an enhanced penalty provision for super drunk driving. Dear Chief Posovitz, since we have adopted the Motor Vehicle Code, we already have in place the provisions for the super drunk driving law. What is needed is a separate penalty provision allowing us to go beyond 93 days for incarceration and with a higher monetary penalty. Accordingly, we have amended Ordinance 202.99 as set forth herein. If the ordinance is acceptable, either send it directly to Kim for introduction or send it back to me, and I will in turn forward it to her for introduction at the next available board meeting in January. Should we have any questions or wish to discuss the matter further, please do not hesitate to contact me. Very truly yours, John Dolan, Attorney York Dolan. And, and I would highly recommend that we immediately pass this, as this will keep money in Clinton Township instead of sending it elsewhere. Move to um, introduce this ordinance. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Who, who's Mr. Argona? Mr. Argona. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Item 11, introduction of town, Township Ordinance 449, amendment to the alcoholic beverage sales. This is... Uh, this is um, this is an ordinance that I don't know, Jack. If you would like to explain it, yes. Uh, essentially, what we're doing here is we are uh, altering our ordinance currently in its present form, relating to alcoholic beverages, using a more generic and general term for the type of uh, alcoholic license that we're dealing with. That's the result of the proliferation within the state through the uh, state <coughs> LLC of the different types of permits. We have all kinds of permits. We have microbreweries. We have distilleries. We have all kinds of new permits, and it appears as though there may be additional changes legislatively as we continue on. And by utilizing this general terminology, we're picking up all of these licenses, and we're essentially separating them into two categories, one where they can only issue with our approval. Secondly, where they issue based on or our recommendation, as a, where our input is considered, but where our input is not required. So we're revising our ordinance to try to keep abreast of the uh, proliferation of these different types of permits. 
Comments or questions? Floor is open for a motion. Move to approve or introduce. Introduce. Introduce, introduce ordinance. Thank you. Support. Supported by Mrs. West. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillahem? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item 12 was adoption of Township Ordinance 447. Mrs. Meltzer, this is yours. Um. Well, Mr. Ken, or again. Would you like me to speak to him? Yes, please. Yes, yes this, please. This is the uh, <coughs> ordinance introduced at the uh, last meeting, and this is consolidating all of the permit dates so that they expire uh, on December 31st. We had several different ordinances which had a uh, expiration date other than December 31st, where most of our ordinances had an expiration date. This was done at the request of the clerk's office who feel that they can more efficiently operate their office and keep track of these permits if they have a uh, single expiration date. Mr. Cannon, if I can just interject there as well. Um, the part actually, I could have explained that part, but <laughs> I wanted to explain the sand and um, uh, sale of sand and earth. However, I want, but thank you for doing that. Um, but I wanted to also add that um, those that were uh, required to um, renew their license in March um, would, not have ha would not have to. So they would get an extension to December where they wouldn't have to come in and renew. So those, and so that way we would start everybody fresh on December 31st of that year, which is this year, so. Thank you. And then, okay, would you? Move no, that's it. correct. We yeah. tried to do it so that we would, if anything, err on the side of extending the period rather than shortening it. Mm -hmm. That is a correct statement. And then we also added a permit fee for one of the uh, sand and gravel permits that we didn't, we found we didn't have one in the, uh, fee schedule so that's also good. but that is to as is that to rectify or eliminate the possibility of like a taking or can you explain that no what, that's so? just we were adding a, a uh, uh, we, we were basically modifying that ordinance for clarity and adding some uh, a provision that relating to fees as I okay so. okay Move to adopt uh, Township Ordinance 447. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Perrault. Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillahem? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 14 is approval to purchase I voted stickers. Dear board members, I voted stickers have become an important part of election day at the polls. The I voted sticker is a tacit proclamation from the person that wears it and an encouragement to others that see it that today is election day and you too should vote. It binds the community in solidarity and encourages everyone to join in the group. People get excited and show their I voted stickers on social media and people become disappointed when stickers run out. People also get creative when no stickers are handed out by making their own using masking tape or post-it notes. Businesses and schools offer incentives and extra credit when their employee or student produces proof they voted on election day. But I voted stickers are not only important to precinct voters, they are also important to those that vote absentee. This past election, I received an email from an absentee voter, uh, Chris and Al, Brackenecki, they too wanted to be recognized for voting and asked if in the future I would put I voted stickers in their absentee envelopes. I think it's a great idea and the attached quote includes stickers to comply with, the re with that request. Clinton Township hosts over 76,000 registered voters and with more than 20% of those voters voting absentee. Providing these stickers for absentee voters is even more germane with the passing of Proposal 3, which now allows for no reason absentee voting. Baytech label came in with the lowest quote of $2,703 for the I voted today and I voted absentee stickers. This is a budgeted request, and thank you for your attention to this request. Sincerely, Kim Meltzer. So can I add to that? Yes. So yeah, this, um, at the last election, the midterm election, we still, we did have I voted stickers. They were a little bit like the smaller oval, very common. Um, but these stickers are, that I purchased this time are going to be a little bit bigger and in your packet you have an example of what those are. Uh, people like the idea of having that and as I stated in the letter, um, 
it's it's become very important, and I didn't really realize it until this until this last election how important it was when students were saying, "Well, we need that to prove that we we voted," um, and our employers the same way. So, um, so that's when certain precinct uh, workers became creative and started making making the "I voted" with masking tape or post its. But as opposed to having them to have to do that, I think we, you know, this is a good way to make sure that we have those and um, we give those to the voters on election day. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? May I ask a question? Yes. I'm looking at the, um, Mr. Meltzer, the, mm -hmm. the bill. You have more for I voted absentee than you do for I voted today. More. Yeah. Orders. So we have. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have, you have more. the others left over. Is that because you have the others left over, or no? We have more absentee voters than, and and we'll, we anticipate having more with the the, the passage of the uh, the absent the no reason absentee. So okay. that's why we increased those numbers. And you said you voted you you ended up ordering seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. because there was a drastic decrease in cost. Okay, but anything over right. five hundred, right? The five hundred so mark. So. By doing that, and their, the longevity is retained. It'll last about 12 elections, which is about five years. Okay, so when you say that you ordered 500, here, I haven't yet done it. But no, I but will. I mean, what, is that 500 boxes or no? I mean, they're in they're in thousand dollar re or thousand thousand sticker re rolls, rolls. Okay. per roll. Okay, yeah. that's why because I'm thinking mm -hmm. it looks like you only ordered 701 instead no. of according to this. So that's why. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Is there a motion? I haven't heard one yet. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 15 is approval of the 2019 membership dues, Clinton River Watershed Council. Dear Kim, it's time to renew your membership with the Clinton River Watershed Council. Your $5,000 dues help support the programs and services we provide to protect water quality and natural resources in your community. Please take a moment to read the enclosed report and we're happy to share all the things we accomplished together in 2018 with the support of dedicated and committed government partners like the Charter Township of Clinton. Our plans for next year include improving our outreach and education efforts through the watershed, continuing to grow the number of communities embracing Water Towns Initiative and hosting our first ever water school, specifically focusing on the Clinton River watershed. For more than 45 years, we have worked together to protect, enhance, and celebrate the Clinton River, its watershed, and Lake St. Clair. We very much appreciate our partnership and look forward to continuing the important work of protecting our precious water resources. Sincerely, Ann Bracey, Executive Director. Thank you. We have more to gain and <laughs> do gain more than any other community because we have all three branches of the Clinton River converging and, and meeting here in Clinton Township. And I'd like to thank Mary Bednar for her leadership in that organization. You provide a real nice presence for Clinton Township. Move to approve. Is there a second? Supported by Mrs. West. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 16, request for cost share of road projects with the Department of Roads. This is really long. Would you like me to read this in its entirety? Um, Mary? You know what? Yes, I do. Okay. It's a, it's, this is a very good thing, and I want everyone it to is. know what it is. It is. Dear board members, over the last year, the Macomb County Department of Roads, the Clinton Township Department of Public Services, Macomb County Executive Hackle, and the Township Supervisor Cannon have worked together on identifying and negotiating a package of road projects that will improve public roads within Clinton Township. This package of road improvements was developed by recommendations from both the Macomb County Department of Roads and Township staff members. Three of these road projects were initiated by the township due to underground water and sewer projects located within the right-of-way. Four road projects are primary roads in the township in very poor condition. Local participation is needed for these projects to be completed. The proposed package of roads recommended by Clinton Township for 2018 and 19 utility improvement projects include Phase 2 District A Relief Sewer, Price, Lynn, Dale, Allen, and Nietzschean Roads. Golden Street Relief Sewer from Danbury to 15 Mile Road. South Nunley Water Main from Gratiot to Theodore. 
the proposed package of roads that the Macomb County Department of Roads is seeking township participation for 2019 and 20 construction include Garfield from Metropolitan Parkway to Millar, Garfield from Hall Road to 19 Mile Road, Kelly Road from Grossbeck to 15 Mile Road, Garfield from 19 Mile Road to 17 Mile Road. I got staff for one second. Mm -hmm. Just to make it clearer, it's really Gar all of Garfield from 16 to Hall Road with the exception of from Millar to 17 Mile. Because that was already because done. Because that was done several years ago. And so it's delineated that way, I think, Mr. Cannon, because they're going to be separate projects. That's right? correct. At they're all times. separate projects. But it's basically, like you said, the whole, <laughs> all of Garfield from yep. Hall Road to, to um, Millar. In the past five years, the township has been able to complete over 10 projects through partnership efforts similar to this request. The Macomb County Department of Roads contributed approximately $700,000 for water and sewer related projects. These successful efforts demonstrate their shared interest to improve township roads in tandem with updating our utility infrastructure. Attached is a list of all the previous successful Macomb County Department of Road and Clinton Township Road Improvement Partnerships. And those are the Macomb County Department of Roads has agreed to contribute $305,000 for road improvements associated with the previously noted Clinton Township water and sewer utility projects. In return for this assistance, the Macomb County Department of Roads is requesting cost share participation from the township for Garfield Road and Kelly Road improvement projects in 2019. A summary of these projects include Garfield Road, Millar to Metropolitan Parkway. This project is a 50-50 match estimated to be $574,000 in township participation. Garfield Road, from Hall Road to 19 Mile Road, this project will be using remaining federal funds from the Mound Road infrastructure in reconstruction project. The federal funds will cover 80% of the road projects, of the road's cost, approximately $3 million. Clinton Township will split the 20% match requirement with the Macomb County Department of Roads, 10% each. This is an estimated $375,000 in township participation. Kelly Road, 15 mile to Grossbeck. This project is being proposed as a 50-25-25 match between Macomb County Department of Roads, City of Fraser, and Clinton Township. The Clinton Township share is estimated to be $600,000. The Macomb County Department of Roads is also seeking a funding commitment from the township on the remainder of Garfield Road for 2020 construction. This is Garfield from 19 mile to 17 mile road. This is the Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, project with 80% federal, 20% local split. The federal funds will cover 80% of the road cost, approximately $3 million. Clinton Township will split the 20% match requirement with the Macomb County Department of Roads, spending 10% each. This is an estimated cost of $750,000 in township participation. We also discussed another improvement on Kelly Road between Penrod and 15 Mile Road. But at this time, we ask not to include this project due to budgetary constraints. The Macomb County Department of Roads has agreed to continue working closely with the township on these projects next year and participating in additional projects in the future. As we approach the 2019 paving season, the next critical step is to obtain the township board approval for the package of road projects, which includes an obligation of $305,000 cost share for the aforementioned utility-related projects, an obligation of $1,549,000 cost share for the two 2019 Garfield projects, that's Millard and Metropolitan Parkway, and Hall Road to 19 Mile Road, and the Kelly Road 15 Mile to Grossbeck project. Funding estimate, I'm sorry, funding commitment for the 2020 Garfield Road improvements from 19 Mile to 17 Mile, which is an estimate $750,000 in township participation. Any other projects will be brought back to the board with finalized costs in the future. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Mary Bednar, Department of Public Services. Thank you, and I just want to remind the board that we have previously committed two Little Mac projects for early, I hope early next year. That's what we've been told, and that's Little Mac to uh, Waybridge from Grossbeck and Little Mac from 15 miles south down to just about St. Thecla Church. So those are both great projects that are already approved by, by this board as well as the county. Uh, Executive Hackle uh, was very gracious in helping us get the additional $9 million federal money to do Garfield. It wasn't on the front burner. And anyone who has driven Garfield recently 
and who will drive it after the winter season again knows that it's in horrible condition. So the projects have been sped up, and the federal government will be providing $9 million. Executive Hackle took $3 million from another project and put it in so that we could get started on that project next year. What we are asking for is basically in the last paragraph on page, on the second page, the obligations there are $305,000, $1,549,000, and $750,000 for several years down the road in 2020 to finish Garfield Road. So that's what we're asking for tonight. I, I worked very hard along with Mrs. Bednar and Scott Chabot, as well as Executive Hackle and his staff. They were very cooperative. We, we put a lot of work into it and a lot of thought into it. And I'm hoping for your approval this evening. Mr. Sorry. Pearl? Yeah, the original $5 million that we set aside for road projects in cooperation with the county and the federal government, how much is left? If we approve this tonight, none. Mm -hmm. This uses it all. This uses mm -hmm. it all. Okay, thank you. Mr. Cannon, what if there's any overruns on that, those projects? What happens then if there's no money left? Mrs. Bednar? We will have a cost share agreement with the Department of Roads, and we'll be, you know, we'll work with them on that. Typically, we haven't seen cost um, any overruns on them because of the way they're bid and the using MDOT and so forth. But um, we'll have to deal with that. But it's because it is an estimated amount. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, mm. Mr. Gillingham. So. <laughs> What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put an actual price tag on all of this. I just gave it for the township. So two point six um, looks like two point six. Two point six. I've got three million three hundred and five without these ones on the bottom. Just the ones on the bottom is always all we're looking for. So these are from the general fund for the road projects. The last three bullets on page two are all that we're asking for. This I mean it's it's a lot, but we're getting a lot. Not the Kelly Road. Utility related projects. Water and sewer projects. Okay, so all right. So if we start with seven hundred thousand from the from page one, mm -hmm. which is in the past five years the township has been able to complete it's the over, county. Okay. It's contribution. It's the, the control to approximately 700,000 for water and sewer related projects. And there's shared interest to improve township roads in tandem. So that's the total price tag of water and sewer related projects. At the county, but. At the county, okay. If so then if we start with 50 50 match with 574, mm -hmm. um, then 375. Then six hundred thousand, then seven hundred and fifty thousand. That equals two million three hundred and nine thousand. And then we've got the Macomb or yeah, yeah, the Macomb County Department of Roads is also seeking a funding commitment from the township on the remainder of Garfield Road from twenty twenty. Is the next bullet point actually what they're talking about there? Yes. Okay, I, good. I if, just wanted to make sure of that. Okay. If I can just clarify real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So that first bullet point in that last paragraph, that 305, that is what the Department of Roads is going to do a cost share with us. That is a water, those are water and sewer projects. So we wouldn't be doing the whole road because you keep, that's their cost share so that we can do the whole road as part of our water and sewer projects. So that 305000 is not our cost. It's the Department of Roads' cost. Okay, that the was next bullet, The next bullet of the obligation of $1.549 million, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is exactly what Paul said, adding the uh, Garfield Millard and Metropolitan, the Garfield from Hall to 19, and the Kelly Road. Okay. And then the last one, the 750000 is the remainder of Garfield. That they have, they're requesting tip money for us, so that, um, so that's us saying that we would contribute to that in the future. Okay. So when you add that 1.549 mil and the 750 uh, mm -hmm. thousand, uh -huh. that that is what's going against that five million that Ken oh, asked Okay. So about. the 305 is. Is not. 
so it's is water and sewer funds out coming out of the water and sewer. So it's yes. two million three hundred and nine thousand. I don't. It didn't add them up, but I yeah. think that's right. Okay. Okay. So, so we're contributing two point uh, three two million two dollars. Nine. Two point two nine nine. That's what I have. Okay. Two point two. Two point two. Yeah. Right. Oh nine. Okay. All right. And um, how much money? Um, is the Department of Roads putting in, and how much are the feds putting in? Understanding that I know this hasn't been bid yet. The feds are putting in nine million dollars, and that's all all okay. to Garfield. And and the Department of Roads is matching ours, so that two point oh, okay. that two point two nine nine million dollars, the Department of Roads is matching. That's ten percent of the overall projects. So it's a dollar for dollar. Yep. From the Department of Roads. So, in other words, a 50% match dollar for dollar with the Department of Roads that does get MTF money. The township gets zero money in MTF. And so this is general fund money from the township services that we have to decide not to do in order to do this. That's correct. Yep. In addition, the Department of Roads is cooperating with Mrs. Bednar in her projects. So rather than directional bore South Nunley, which is one of the options, as opposed to putting a new, a new road in, the Department of Roads said that that's not a, a one or a two yet. What was it, Mary? Was that a three? South Nunley or was so South Nunley was rated a two and a three in one. Like there's two different segments. They, the Department of Roads did not want to participate initially. So through the process of negotiation, we said. It would be foolish for us to directional bore and in three years have a road that's a one or a two and then be impassable and then somehow have to figure out how to repave that road at that time with no monies coming from the Department of Roads at all. So now we're paying half from the water and sewer fund for that project specifically and the Department of Roads is paying the other half as part of what we negotiated. So, so in other words, if we would have a directional drilled, we wouldn't have replaced the road. We would just be replacing a small section of that road. Is that that's correct? Is that correct? A very small section. Right. We have an option of directional drilling or open cutting it. But the problem is with water is you still have to do the reconnection of all the services. So, so you're ending up, up opening. Anyway. So you're digging it up yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. So so it didn't make sense because we'd we'd be digging up and replacing, digging up and replacing it in front of every home yeah. basically. Um, so then you'd get new, old, new, old. You kind of get that bumpy. Um, so the idea is why not, you know, this is something that um, communities, you know, when you do asset management, you know, the roads and the pipes are the same age. Mm -hmm. So if the roads on the surface are bad, you can imagine the pipes are, mm -hmm. right? So right. this is the idea of working together. That's why mm -hmm. when we did Santa Ana and Santa Barbara, we did the water main. That's what, you know, exactly. it's kind of... Trying they, to be proactive so that we don't come that back. that because they dug up everybody's lawn anyway. <laughs> they should have just open trenched it. Right, Scott? So, so if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you, when, when, when they're matching these dollars on these um, road projects, such as Nunley being the example, um, what, what pot of money is the Department of Roads using? Are they using the local road match money that we've been able to utilize for projects like Thornton, Tessens, um, you know, Charter Oaks Boulevard, Santa Ana, Santa Barbara. The answer is no. So they still have that $2 million in, in Okay. Right, and we, st and we did ask for projects in that as well. Okay. But that's not included in this because those are SADs. So, and Nunley sort of, you know, is sort of a unique road because one, you, you know, when you do an SAD project, you generally have two sides of the street where you have residents. Um, mm -hmm. Nunley only has residents on one right. side of the street, but right. there's a certain degree of, I mean, the question that really gets screamed out here is Thornton and Tessens went out there, did an SAD, mm -hmm. they're paying 50% match with the county. And now these other streets are being done with the township picking up that 50% match share that the residents otherwise would have done. And, you know, and even though logistically it makes sense, financially, there seems to be some 
lack of equity here. Mm -hmm. And, and, no way and it's ever... something that we have to figure out how how we can justify that. How do we how do we tell those residents? Yes, this makes financial sense for them and for us. And you know, uh, they're some are paying, some are not, and and that's that's part of the difficulty here that I'm having. Just remember that we are doing a water main replacement there. That is a 16 inch water main that is old and feeds. It's a transmission line. It just it doesn't just feed the people on South Nunley. It feeds a majority of the township water. So if we had a water main break and had an issue, we could be having a major issue throughout the community because it's a it's a transmission line. So we're fixing the water main first and the street because that's we're being proactive. That's what we did proactive. on Beaconsfield and mm -hmm. Little Mac. Exactly. Right. That's right. what we did there. And we did the same thing yeah. on Beaconsfield. We were doing, on Little Mac, we've done the same thing. You know, and these are more larger roads. They're considered local roads, but they're still feeders. Think South Nunley feeds because because of the limited access on Metro Parkway, Collect that feeds the, the, the houses on South Nunley, but also that neighborhood. It feeds the Thornton and Tessens neighborhood so they can come in on that road and come through. So it's a collector road. Okay. Are you, yes, are you which, looking for... Which also Charter Oaks Boulevard is a collector road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a school there, right. but those residents still stepped up to have to pay 50% of that. And in fact, um, we had to scramble on that one because it was technically out of the 10%, and we came up with a larger share of paving dollars because of the extra amount of but they, um, water work that we were doing. They le levied all so their residents, not just on the main road, but everybody paid right. for it mm -hmm. in that that subdivision or what do you want to call it, the, the Charter Oaks. The, the two of them, the two the groups, the co-op, the co-ops, the co-op and the condos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, they all paid for it. It wasn't everybody in the neighborhood, but yeah, it was everybody that had a court yeah. that then entered out right. onto that. Yeah, right. So, Mr. Cannon, are you looking for a motion to I am. approve this? I am. Okay. So, I've I've studied this for a while, made some calls on it, and I I appreciate the work you put into it, and that the county's agreeing to come up with a lot of money to. Even though I'm not happy that we're having to pay it out of general fund, I don't think we have a choice. I uh, I would move that we approve the funding as outlined. The 1.549 million cost share for the two 2019 Garfield projects, and the uh, 750 thousand for the 2020 Garfield Road improvement. Thank Perfect. you. I'll support that. Chuck, if, or excuse me, Ken, make sure that the 2019 also includes the Kelly Road, Kelly. which is in that total number, but you just said Garfield. And the Kelly Road, yeah, 15 mile project is included too in the 1.549 million cost share. And we do have a, a support of that, Mr. Aragona? Yeah. Bob Hogan, 36755 Bar Street, Clinton Township. We're talking South Nunley Road. Is that between 16 Mile Road and Theodore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. In front of the church there. In front of the church. I, I say Gratiot. It doesn't go to Gratiot, but yes. And that's all the way to Theodore. Exactly. So that would close off that access route to Thornton then. Yes, that goes all, it goes all the way to Theodore, correct. So then the only other access road would be off of Harper. When you say close out, you mean that would well. If you if you stop Nunley South Nunley Road, then there's only one other access road to that subdivision. That's on Harper. Correct. There's that access, and then there's the Harper access. Right. On Garfield Road between Millard and Seventeen Mile Road, they did some repair work a couple years ago, and they uh, didn't do the entire road. They did like 90% or 80% of it, and they left big sec or certain sections in place. That's correct. Are they going to do the same thing for the balance of this Garfield Road that we're talking, or is that all going to be redone? From Millar to 16 will be done exactly the same as the portion you just mentioned. From Hall Road to 17 Mile, it's a different construction. It's new construction. Hmm. On the part going to 16 Mile, between Millard and 16, if they leave these sections of concrete in place, the road concrete. Some of them, yes, the good ones. The ones that are not damaged. 
How do they do uh, the bed on that? The, of the part that they're not replacing? Correct. I don't know the answer to that. Do any of our engineers? I do know that the part they did from Millar to 17 has turned out very nice. Oh, that's a smooth road, but I, I'm looking for longevity. Yeah. If they kept the bed as is, or how do they repair oh, the I, bed? I don't know the answer to that. You know, the part that's left would have a shorter lifespan. Well, what Mrs. Bednar said earlier on a different project is they have different standards today than they did 10 years ago. They have different standards today than they did five years ago. So whatever the standards are, they're going to do. And I know that they didn't go through and do a real quick job from Millar to 17 either. They did a very thorough job, and it took quite some time. It was bizarre how they did it, I, actually. I it was agree. Like cutting sections and then cutting another but section. It, and then I didn't actually watch them construct it. Yeah. I, in fact, we, we drove by a lot. It was We drove it by was, a lot, and it was really odd it was how bizarre. that whole thing yeah. happened. But, but that's, that's the same type of construction yeah. it would be, and you're going to get the same end result. Yeah. I mean, it was a good result over there. It, it, did, uh, Mr. Mr. Cannon, if I could correct, from Hall Road to 17, what they're going to do is a mill and fill, right. which is similar to uh, what they did on 19 Mile, if, oh. if that's correct, right? Mill okay. yeah. and fill. Yep. Does that mean leave sections in? No, no, no. no. they're going to mill all the whole the thing mill it out and put two inches them. down, probably, um, two or three inches. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all. The community will benefit greatly. Item 17, update of water and sewer pre-qualification requirements. Dear members of the board, attached to this letter is a revised document for the contractor pre-qualification review process. We are requesting two changes to this document. The first was to clarify the three members of the pre-qualification committee. The second is to add pipe bursting as an acceptable form of construction for a water and sewer project. After discussion with, discussion with Mr. Robert Cannon, Township Supervisor, he is recommending the appointment of Scott Chabot, P. Anderson, Eckstein, and Westrick, Inc., Ken Pearl, Township Trustee, and myself as the pre-qualification committee. We are asking for your approval for the changes in the appointment of the committee members. Sincerely, Mary Bednar, Director for Department of Public Services. Thank you, and I did not ask ahead of time, Mr. Pearl, but we asked <laughs> to your name be put on here because of your experience in the industry. So moved. Support. You accept? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I See, figured I'd say it before he said on. no. <laughs> Roll call, please. He didn't object. Mrs. Master. <laughs> yes, Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 19, request to amend budget for DPW overtime. Uh, we should get about we have the Oh, I forgot 18. <laughs> Dear members of the board, attached is a proposed contract for engineering and consulting services between Anderson Eckstein and Westrick Inc. and the township. The contract was reviewed by Mr. Jack Dolan, township attorney, and myself. We find it acceptable. We are requesting review and approval from the township board. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact Mr. Dolan or me. Sincerely, Mary Bednar, Director of the Department of Public Services. Mr. Pearl? I have a, we were given a, an updated one. What's the changes? There's one change. It relates to the indemnity section, and it's a uh, unrestricted indemnity with regard to uh, the amount or source of uh, the indemnity. So I'm fully satisfied with it. Okay. Paragraph 11. Okay. Thank you. Move to approve the contract as so submitted. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Now, a request to amend budget for DPW overtime. Dear members of the board, most of the overtime worked in the Department of Public Works is reactionary and often unpredictable. Reasons for overtime include work requested by other departments, weather events, the paving inspection program, building issues, response to fire and security alarms, park events, and or uh, and other miscellaneous matters. This year, we had two large sidewalk programs in addition to our paving program, which consumed a large portion of our budget. 
An extensive upgrade to the heating system created a need for overtime in the area of building and grounds. Our parks create a large need for additional work due to proms, homecomings, weddings, tournaments, and the new addition of 5K races. Almost every township event or festival requires DPW overtime as well. At this time, we have not yet exceeded our overtime budget, but in anticipation of doing so, we are requesting a budget amendment of an additional $20,000. Sincerely, Mary Bednar, Director for the Department of Public Services. And if it continues not to snow, she probably won't spend it. Well, that would be nice. You promise? And pray. <laughs> the snow or the not spend? <laughs> <laughs> Either one. That it won't snow. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 20, request approval of sale of out-of-service police vehicles. Dear board members, I respectfully request to sell four of our police-owned vehicles. The vehicles no longer meet our departmental needs. We, are, we will be following the township policy and procedure for selling township property. I recommend to the board to permit the cars to be auctioned off at a Motor City auction in Roseville. They charge a flat fee of $100 per car sold. Sincerely, Fred Posovitz, Chief of Police. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Support. Supported by Mr. Aragona. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Out of... Item 21, request approval to attend conference. Dear board members, I respectfully request board approval to attend the 2019 Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police Midwinter Training Conference. The dates are February 5th to the 8th, 2019. It is held at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel, Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is the budgeted <coughs> conference. Sincerely, Fred Posovitz, Chief of Police. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. Moved by? Support. Meltzer. Meltzer and supported Mr. Gillahan. No, by Mr. Keyes. Oh. Supported it. Oh, Mr. Keyes did. I'm sorry. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And item 22, request for a cost adjustment related to a firehouse expo. Dear Honorable Board Members, I'm ready to request an amendment for the cost associated with the firehouse conference and exhibition that firefighters Raymond Amari... Amarmino, Eric Capral, and Lieutenant Mike McLaughlin attended from October 16th to October 20th, 2018. The requested amount is $1,501.29, which is available in the education and training budget. The, fo the follow following report on the actual expenses incurred is included for, all, for an overall breakdown. The majority of the overage, $854.43, was due to lo local hotel fees, which had changed over the past year and increased parking fees charged by the hotel that were not anticipated. In addition, due to the attendees' ability to arrive earlier than anticipated, the attendees were able to attend the pre-conference workshops, which increased the cost of the conference. The value of the conference has already reaped dividends for the fire department as the attendees were able to make contact with a representative from Homatro Rescue Tools and were able to un cover a design deficiency with our ladder trucks rescue system, which has saved us between $10,000 to $15,000 in repairs that would have been necessary in the future. Oh, okay. Thank you for your consideration in regards to this matter. Should you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me at any time. Sincerely, Tim Duncan, Clinton Township Fire Chief. Chief Duncan, just wanted the board to understand that there was an additional charge for the fellows to go, but that they re reaped a lot of benefit from it, mm -hmm. and he wanted you to know about that. So move to approve. Support. Support. Supported by Mr. Keyes. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer, yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Pearl. <coughs> yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Motion passes. Item 22 is disposition of vacant Walter Street property. On December 10th, 2018, the Clinton Township Property Disposition Committee reviewed an offer from Ms. Yvonne Liston B. Brownlee to mm -hmm. participate, to per I'm sorry, to purchase the Clinton Township owned property. Parcel number 16-11-35-304-016 for the sum of $8,000. Be advised that the Property Disposition Committee is recommending that the Clinton Township Board of Trustees approve the sale of the property to Ms. Brown Lee for the sum of $8,000. We submit this recommendation for your considera consideration. Sincerely, Bruce Thompson, Department of Planning and Community Development. It's a very good use of the property. 
Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? A second, and I should just mention that you know, per per our policy, um, these properties have gone out for bid in the past. When we receive no bids, we then are able to entertain offers. Um, the offer here is a really good one. We obtained this property in 2013 for um, three thousand seven hundred and thirty-three dollars. So um, there is a uh, um, e even though it's been on. Or off the tax roll, so we've been carrying. There's certain carrying costs to it. Um, this is a uh, a good return for this property. It is. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Gillahan. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keys. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. Melty. Yes. Motion passes. The item 24 is again oh. a disposition of township owned property. On December 10th, 2018, the Clinton Township Property Dispos Disposition Committee reviewed an offer from Mr. Um, Jose Olivan of 34370 Oak View, Clinton Township, Michigan, mm -hmm. to purchase the Clinton Township property owned adjacent to his parcel number 16-11-35-178-011 for the sum of $2,500. Be advised that the Property Disposition Committee is recommending that the Clinton Township Board of Trustees approve the sale of the property to Mr. Olivan for the sum of $2,500. We submit this recommendation for your consideration. Sincerely, Bruce Thompson, Director, Department of Planning and Community development. Move to approve. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Just Carl. one thing I'd like to add to this, and I think we should probably do it to the one that we just approved as well, and that is that um, it should be the responsibility of the uh, purchaser to pick up the uh, cost of the transfer tax and the recording fees. Okay. Mr. Cannon, I would add this. I'm making the assumption that we're following our policies <laughs> on the sale of disposition of surplus properties on all of these which requires it, we transfer the property by quick claim deed only. It's sold as is, where is, where is right. and any and all costs associated with the sale, uh, including transfer taxes, uh, both at the county and state, are paid by the uh, purchaser. Thank you. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. Roll call. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item 25, Clinton Township Ethics Policy. Okay. This was brought forward by Trustee Mike Keyes, Joey West, and Treasurer Paul Gillahan. And um, they want, either one of them wants to speak to it. Is there a letter? No. I did not receive any letter. Okay. Oh, there was a letter. I didn't get one. I don't have a letter. There's a policy, but... I didn't get one. Do you have a letter? I don't have no packet. Do you have a letter? It's on the packet. No. No. Huh? No, I guess there wasn't a letter. There wasn't a letter to that one. I can speak to it to start. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Um, and thank you to Trustee West and Treasurer Gilham for putting this on the agenda. Obviously, this has been brought forward to the board in previous meetings. It was directed to go to the Budget Ways and Means with a time frame on it. Um, and obviously, that time frame has passed. And so we added this onto the agenda as an update or an opportunity to discuss the ethics policy and see where the other board members um, are at in regards to the policy, seeing as we've signed a letter and put out to the public uh, the eight priorities that we want to set out in, in such a policy. Uh, we've had the we've had three meetings of the Budget Ways and Means Committee uh, since we had the, the Township Board meeting. Two of the three meetings had the item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. It never got to because the the uh, meeting was too long. People had to leave for lunch and other activities. And Mrs. Meltzer is going to have a special meeting so that we can address this at an earlier morning hour, and it will be as soon as she can schedule it. When she indicated that this was a time period you could bring it back. That is correct, but she also noted that she had an election and that there were a number of different holidays between that time period and today. And you bring it back, but it may have to have an extension, and that's what we need today. It will be done. We want it done. We all, there's, everybody on this board wants it done. It's happening all throughout the country. It's happening at the state level, the national level. So it's just something that we're going to do, and it will be done. So do you want a motion to send it back to yes. Budget Ways and Means? I'll move that we send it back to Budget Ways and Means and expect a report back within 30 days. Is that fair? 
Is that enough time, Mrs. Meltzer? So, uh, well, I'd like, I, what I'd really like is to have a special meeting because when we set it with... I didn't but, disagree with that. I yeah, okay, it. so it's going to be a special meeting because there can be no other issue to discuss because it just, you know, it yeah, takes right. a long time. We've got to, you know, look at all the issues Definitely. and concerns that the board has. So I don't want anything to interfere with that. So I'd be happy to, um, yeah, within 30, 30 days. Enough. Yeah. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Is so, there a support? <laughs> Support. Support. Okay. Support of Mr. Aragona. So just to speak to that issue, though, and that is um, the last time we discussed this, um, I, I asserted it then. I, I asserted it again in the staff meeting, so it should be a surprise to no one. But, you know, the Budget Ways and Means meeting is not necessarily a public meeting. It's a meeting in a sense of a, um, a functioning work group of the township. It's not a meeting that's posted. It's not a meeting where the public uh, has the opportunity to come in, um, observe, or participate in the debate. And I suggest that we set up a special committee for the purposes of creating this policy. Uh, a lot of communities have done it that way. Um, I think it's something that um, uh, is um, of paramount, especially when you consider the things that have occurred within the township, um, uh, the uh, upheaval that we've seen over the past, um, you know, three years, and particularly this past year, with very surprise um, results, surprise outcomes. You know. <laughs> Of other revelations that you know, somebody who been at the township for so long and you know was was a part of a fraud conspiracy. Um, you know, the, the single recommendation from the, one of the reports that we received, the township needs a strong ethics policy, and um, we've been we've been sort of you know bouncing around with this. We went from you know just the. Um, the blanket um, Michigan Townships Association policy. Um, there was criteria put forward. Um, we said, okay, combine, blend those two. Our township attorneys went to work uh, to blend those two, bring it back, and then uh, it, it could be debated at a public meeting. Instead of that, it was referred to budget ways and means. Um, this is something that needs, I think, a public debate because it's about ensuring transparency for the public. So um, I'll, be, I'll be opposed to sending this to Budget Ways and Means. I think we need a special committee. I think that committee needs to be um, held uh, with the postings where everyone can, can participate, including the public. Thank you. That's the same speech you gave three months ago. And you, and you voted no three months ago. Yep. But what you, where you're missing the point is the public debate is here at this meeting, not in a Workshop. meeting, a, a, workshop a workshop or a staff meeting uh, where we're trying to iron out things to get it to a point where we can debate it publicly. So we will be having that public debate at this table. So we have a motion on the floor and a support. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. West? No. Mr. Keyes? No. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? No. Mrs. Meltzer, yes, motion passes okay. to send it to Budget Ways and Means within and bring it back within 30 days, and this will be a special meeting. Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. On the same agenda item. Okay, well, it's passed. We're done with that, but. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to uh, direct the clerk's office to post the budget ways and special budget ways and means meeting, so that way not just the three full-time elected officials can attend, but that way all four of the trustees can attend the meeting, let our voices be heard, but then even more importantly than that, to allow the public to witness the meeting and to allow them to watch, just as many communities ha have done in the past. The, uh, so if I get support, I'd like to vote on that support. motion. I'll support that. Roll call. Yes, sir. Bob Hogan, 36755 Bar Street, Clinton Township. I'd like to be at that meeting also. I'd like to know about it. And just participate or just listen, but just to see how the, I, I came in here prepared for some conversation tonight, which won't take place. Uh, so that was just my input. I'd like to be at the meeting whenever it is, or at least have the opportunity to be at the meeting. The problem with having a public at a meeting like this is that we're, we're trying to get it done in a 30-day time period. It might take a lot longer because of that. It certainly will, but we get it right. Okay. And well. what I was trying to do is get some input. Every uh, I had prepared to give some input, but it's unlikely uh, 
it would be taken as serious as if it was at a different meeting where I could voice it at that time. Thank you. Okay, so we're voting on whether or not to have this as an open meeting so that anyone who wishes to can come. So I, this I, is a special board meeting. This is basically what they just asked for and we said no to. Yeah, well, we said I, I'm, I'm opposed to doing that. I think we need to discuss it among our staff and among the three of us and bring it back to the full board for consideration. So roll call? Oh, just one final comment. Okay. Thank you. Just to clarify for the public, so a vote yes on this would allow the public and the four trustees to attend the Budget Ways and Means or special full board meeting and allow us to, part to uh, participate in that conversation. A vote no would continue the process of keeping this as an internal meeting, not allowing the public to attend or um, actually there's no minutes either for the public uh, to witness or to read unless they minutes. fill out a FOIA request. There are minutes. Yeah, so you can yeah. fill out a FOIA request to, to see those. But again, a yes vote would allow the public and the trustees, the four elected trustees, to participate in the conversation of an ethics policy here in Clinton Township. This Mr. Cannon, we just voted on that just oh, that's, you know, that's two correct. minutes ago. I, He's just flipping it, you know. You I, know I saying, would disagree. We just voted on whether or not we were sending a, a, a recommendation to a committee. This is opening up the committee mm -hmm. to allow for the trustees and the public to attend. That's not There's a committee a then. It's No, well, it becomes a board meeting. When you have you can call you know, elected, you no, well, that's what wait, it is. Wait, can I have a clarification? Mm -hmm. What is this? This is not going to be a board meeting. This is going to be a budget ways and means. It's not going to be here. It is it's a not board going to be on TV. No. It's going to be in a budget ways and means wherever you guys meet, and whoever wants to come can come. Then that opens it up. Mm -hmm. to it's public meeting anyway, but it would not account no, 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 against your attendance meeting. record. It, it's a yeah, all committee meetings are public. No, they are not. Mm -mm. No, that, that is not. not true, Mr. Attorney. Mr. Cannon, Mr. Dolan. Okay. The budget ways and mean, means meetings are not public meetings. Uh, there's not a quorum of the board, mm -hmm. and there is a discussion of policy, and whatever action is taken is subject to approval by the board. As outlined by Mr. Keyes, because the trustees would be present and would have the opportunity to have input at that meeting, that meeting must be scheduled as a special board meeting. Since there would be the potential of a quorum of the board, at that point in time, compliance with the Open Meetings Act is required. It has to be posted mm -hmm. and the other requirements of an open meeting uh, complied with. As a point of clarification that you're absolutely correct, Mr. Dolan, and the fact that we have to um, go with the Open Meetings Act. But at this committee meeting, we would not have the power to approve the budget amendments or the policy itself. The Budget Ways and Means Committee only has the power to make a recommendation to this body. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you were not to attend the meeting, it's not that you would uh, miss out on any board votes or miss out on an attendance to a meeting. This is an internal meeting that we are choosing to post and make an open, you can call it a work group if you'd like, uh, whatever you know, wording you want to put around it. But the idea is you allow the public and the four trustees to attend and participate. Roll call, please. Mr. Cannon, let me just say, if it sounds like a duck and it walks like a duck and it, you know, it, it's a duck, you know. So this is, as our attorney just stated, it is, this, we're voting on a board meeting. It is not a budget ways nope. and means He's shaking meeting. his head no behind you. The, the Roberts Rules of Orders contend that when we are together in four or more, that is a <laughs> body that has voting rights and can vote. So that can happen. Just, it's very disingenuous to say that it couldn't or wouldn't happen. Okay. Okay, roll call. Can Mr. Dolan please clarify that? Because that's not a true statement, and I want to be comfortable voting. You asked one thing a while back, is that correct? That's true. Okay, thank you. Me. Roll call, please. Everybody knows what we're voting on. We do. Yep. All right. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Pearl? No. Mr. Cannon? No. Mr. Aragona? No. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? No. Thank you. Motion passes. Item 26. Discussion regarding the Township's Casual Day program. Is there a, any backup to this? Nope, but I can discuss it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as a point of discussion, I added this to the agenda because in working with the administrative aid, there are many functions in which uh, she participated throughout the township. And to try to help with the workload, I know that the clerk's office and supervisor's office had agreed to pick up where they felt needed to be picked up. Um, and in one of those areas, uh, the supervisor's office had taken over the administration of the casual day program. This was a program that I spent some time with the administrative aid, learning the process of and some upcoming changes that she wanted to make. 
And so in the process of doing that, I started um, trying to administer the program and was advised by the supervisor's office that I should stop. And so I put it on the agenda as, a form, uh, as an item of discussion. And at this point, I'd like to make a motion to direct the supervisor's office to allow the trustees department to continue to administer, administer the casual day program. That's not what this is all about. I'm perplexed how a trustee could think it's his prerogative to send out a township directive. And I'm going to go through the steps since you didn't have anything prepared. Uh, start with Mrs. Stoller. Good afternoon. In light of this Friday being my last day at the township, De December 14th will be a free day. Also, the two Fridays following due to the extended Christmas holiday and New Year's holiday, both Friday, December 21st and Friday, December 28th will be free days. And then she gives a total of how much we brought in for the year, which is very nice. It has been an honor and a privilege to be involved in this program since its inception in 2002, which I started and asked for help in the administrative aid uh, department. Then, and that was on December 11th, on Friday, December 21st at 9.37 a.m., good morning. Our casual for a cause this Friday, December 21st, is in support of, I won't even mention the, the group, it works with so-and-so, I support them, and just forward your donations to the Human Resource Department by the end of the day. If donating by check, make it carable to the name of the organization, and that's from Mike Keys. That was at 9.37. At 9.43, my deputy Liz Vogel sent you a, what a nice note. Hi, Mike. I guess Debbie didn't tell you that this Friday and next Friday are free days for casual for a cause day. See below. Our office is handling casual days moving forward, as this process should be handled by a township staff. The first two in January are in support of Cookies for Troops. Amy and I will work with the finance department to get everything scheduled. And then I sent out to our staff because there was a lot of confusion. <laughs> that early in the morning on Friday when you're asking them to send money to the Human Resource Department. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Supervisor Cannon, please disregard the email from Trustee Keyes regarding casual day. Per Debbie's email on the 11th, today and next Friday are free days. The next casual days will be in support of Cookies for Troops. Liz, Bob Kim, feel free to give me a call. And this is at 948, same hour. But Debbie and I spent two days meeting over the casual day program and have coordinated with Lisa Murray and Bill Smith. At 1004, Mike, Bob has decided that the supervisor's office will handle casual day, a program that I started. Your, your email to the entire staff was inappropriate and has caused a great deal of confusion. As noted below, the staff was already made aware that today and next Friday are free days. <coughs> now, it says you coordinated with Lisa Murray and Bill Smith. Is that what you did? Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, did Mr. Keyes coordinate that, this with you at all? The, an the answer is no. Okay, it's what? extremely inappropriate what you did. I fully intend, once you have a deputy in place, to have the deputy administer the program. But for you to send out a memo to the entire staff directing them to send money to the Human Resource Department indicating you would talk to the Human Resource Director when in fact you had not, that is very inappropriate and disingenuous. Joe Aragona is the trustee in charge. If he had a problem, he would have called me. I had other trustees ask me to take over the program in the interim. And for you to do that on your own, I just cannot believe you did it. You're good. The program's coming back to you when you have a deputy if that's what you're worried about. But what I'm worried about is a trustee sending a memo to the entire staff and lying in the memo. May I say something? Mr. Cannon? Yes. I think, it, I think people need to know that it's a little bit of a misnomer when we talk about it's a free day because we have a lot of our staff that does, um, you know, deductions. It, it, but, it's, but still, it's, it's, but still. It's irrelevant. And I know it might be irrelevant, but 
you know, when you call it a free day, I think we need to make sure that, that people know what we're talking our, about. Our, it's really not. A free day is when we take the money and put it into an account for an especially large donation that we want to make to a, a special group. But a free day that doesn't mean that we're going to send a check to somebody that you decide we're going to send a check no. to. And why would you say Mr. S you coordinated with Mr. Smith when, in fact, you did not? If I can speak. Um, thank you, Mr. Cannon. Uh, and I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, that you feel that I didn't coordinate with you. Uh, Lisa, Mr. Smith, uh, Lisa Murray is the one I spoke with in the office, and I believe you share a secretary, and she told me that it would be inappropriate to ask that the secretary accept donations until she coordinated that with you. And so then she called me back two days later, letting me know that she had asked your permission about that. And seeing as that's what we were asking your department, your secretary, I believe you share that, correct? Um, that's what I'm referring to when I say that I coordinated with you. So I, even if that were true, okay. that department doesn't coordinate what you're asking here. That's a human resource department. Yeah, That is and not his function. He has limited staff. Now you're going to ask him to start taking in money in his department? And so, again, that is why I asked if it would be okay. They had given me the indication that it would. I had worked with Debbie Stoller, and obviously you had said that other trustees had asked you to take over the program. I would ask them if they sat down with Debbie Stoller and asked her what programs she had coordinated with other trustees, what programs she had coordinated with the clerk of the supervisor's office, and I'll tell you the answer is no, because I talked with Debbie Stoller about that. And so, yes, you're right, Mr. Cannon, it's fine to come into a department and just start making decisions or giving away tasks like the appointments for the committees or the notes in the committee process. But we as the trustees are another form of government. We are the legislative branch here. And so for the executive branch or the administrator of the township to come in and take a program unilaterally without communicating to the board or the trustees, that is what is inappropriate. And so it no. may seem silly that we're talking about a casual day program, and to clarify, Mrs. West's point. We don't have free days here in Clinton Township. The individuals that pay per day or per week, they have a free day. But me as an employee who gets my casual day money taken out of my check every single week, that money goes into a pot and an administrator decides what charities are going to be picked. Now, we, Trustee West and myself, have worked with Debbie Stoller to try to come up with a policy that said that no, every donation is going to be allocated for a charity. We're no longer in Clinton Township just going to have a pot of money where we decide what charities we're going to benefit or what groups we're going to benefit. If you look at other programs throughout the county, they're administered by the HR department because that's the proper way to do something like this. Develop a policy on how charities are approved, what credentials they need to be approved, and then how those charities are selected. And then publish that to your website mm -hmm. so everyone can be on the same page. And that is exactly what I attempted to do. I apologize that my first email was confusing. I should have clarified that the donations that were going to be, would be collected from the paychecks were going to be going to that charity rather than sitting in the fund. This is something that Debbie Stoller and I worked out prior to her leaving, and obviously there was a miscommunication on the original email she had sent out, and I apologize about that. I don't need to belabor this issue. I do think it, it's, it, to the public, it must look silly talking about a casual day program, but again, I'm trying to make clear that we as the trustees have a role here. It's an oversight role, and when administrators unilaterally take that those roles, whether it's programs, oversight, or the committee process, we have something to be worried about here. Thank you. Mr. Cannon. I'm going to let Mr. Pearl go. Just some clarification. Uh, Mr. Keyes, we weren't aware of it as trustees. I was calling and talking to Mr. Aragoni about as our lead trustee as of January 1st to handle that problem of trying to coordinate things with the supervisor's office so things get done. We weren't aware that you were doing this on your own. So it isn't we, it's you. I apologize, decided. Debbie. Yeah. There was no correspondence with the other trustees or let alone the supervisor's office that something was being done. You know, we just wanted to make sure that Mr. Rione was getting things done and that there wasn't a lapse of services in our department. So we weren't aware that you were working on this. Well, what he did was extremely inappropriate and unacceptable. And you will be getting the program back in your department after you hired administrative aid. I'm waiting for him to let me know. Yeah. I just, um, I'm a little concerned I, in the direction I think what I'm hearing you're saying this should go in, uh, Mr. Keyes. This, com this, com uh, this program is 
been a hit out of the park from day right. one. Um, it has not been political. Where I think if if there's this. Um, Whoever's in charge of it is looking at it and trying to decide which committees should get what or which organizations should get what. Uh, I think that that might lend itself to a political leaning, and I would hate to see that happen um, in this because this has been, I mean, this has been a great program for for nonprofits and um, for for charitable organizations, and to. To kind of, at least, unless you want to clarify to me what you meant by you know you being the one or the trustees being the one where that money goes, yeah, that kind of is a concern for me. So, how do you want to? I guess to explain? clarify that currently the trustees are the and not even the trustee, a single administrator is the only one who decides what charities are picked and which ones are not. And so they don't have. There are no requirements on whether or not that they have a license with the state to solicit funds. Um, there are no requirements at all. It's simply give the name to the administrative aid, the administrative aid will decide. You're absolutely right. I think it could get political. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is go with the route of most municipalities, which is to adopt a policy saying that they have to meet these two or three requirements, something simple, nothing mm -hmm. crazy. We're talking about a casual day program here. And then also, once the list is approved, publish it on the website so everyone can be on the same page to say, these are the um, charities that were selected and approved. If you go through the list of Clinton Township charities, what you'll find is various ones are GoFundMes. And we've actually had some issues. Uh, Ms. Dollar walked me through issues in the past where they made donations to an organization that later found out were using the funds fraudulently and had to return the money back to some of the employees. And so those are the types of things that I would like to stop here in Clinton Township. Okay. Since 2002, I started the program one day a month. Now it's four days a month. It's worked very nicely until you get involved, Mr. Keyes. Oh, you know. but Mr. Aragona? Yeah, um, I just wanted to add, I, again, I like you and Mr. Pearl mentioned, I uh, have taken over as lead trustee for when we do get an administrative aid. Um, I have been working with uh, your deputy um, to take over any of the roles that our current administrator does have, uh, including uh, this program. Mm -hmm. I also asked Ms. Stoller uh, if there were programs or basically you know, what do we need to pass on. She knew that the supervisor's office was going to be taking over for most of those functions. Uh, neither her nor you came to me with that. Now, if you don't want to, that's fine. But I think this could have been left off the agenda and we could have taken care of this if there was just a little bit more communication. So that's number one. Number two. Uh, for an elected official just to pick whatever charity they want, I don't think is right. Uh, that's the administrator of aid does it, and I agree with you that maybe we should change that, maybe we should direct it somewhere else, but Mr. Keyes, you didn't have any communication with me. I don't believe you had any communication with Mr. Pearl. Any communication well, with you? Mm -hmm. I, I knew about I knew about this. Okay, so you and had you communication with one wait. trustee, and that was it. And all of a sudden, I get an email. Going, let, let, him finish. let him finish, please. I thought the deputy Before. supervisor was taking care of this issue. Mm, she was. Just like mm -hmm. it happens with every other township in the state, because every other township in the state doesn't have an administrative aid. We choose to. That's fine. But most trustees, like you said, if you want a separation, most trustees go through the supervisor's office. Okay. And if you really want to imply that there is a separation, why is the supervisor sitting here in a voting memo? Okay. I think you're creating way too much of a separation in your argument between the legislative and executive branches. You really need to take a look at what a township organization does and how it operates. Thanks. Thank you. There was also Mr. a comment that, um, that you were going to deliver the money yourself. Is that? No, no, no. no. We had heard that. May I? Who from who? I, I, Mr. Oh, Cannon. Matter. No I names. Just, no, just. I want to make sure that Mr. Cannon. You know, you brought this up without a letter, so I'm just making so, sure we're clearing. I, I know that we don't like to do that on this board, but it's a discussion item. It's an yeah. item for discussion. Okay. It's not meant to be a um, motion to receive and file. It's a discussion, so we can figure out, and like Mr. Aragona says, where the communication is. Well, you know what? This really isn't an issue for the township. No, what, what are we? How are we advancing the township well, with something like this on the agenda? Mr. Mrs. Cannon? West. Thank you. Um. Instead of us uh, pinning Mr. Keys to the cross, I will take the blame of not conversing with the two of you. I knew about this during the time that, you know, Debbie was leaving, that, that we wanted to put this somewhere. Mr. Keys said that he would do it. We did not, I mean, we were, you know, he was going to go ahead and teach the new administrative aid and all 
all of that kind of fell through the cracks. We didn't have an administrative aide to teach. So, and, and we didn't have somebody who was going to start like January 1 or whatever. So that, I will be the one who will take the blame for not communicating with the two of you. I'm sorry. However, I think um, now that this is out in the open, I know that it was Mary Ann Hosey years ago who went to Mr. Cannon and said, this is what Rotary does, and I think it would be a good thing. And let's, can we do it? And he gave the approval. And we have been very successful with this program. He did not make up the, was, this was one of the charities that's on the list from Debbie. He didn't make that part up. He didn't do any of that. It's one of the charities we've given to in the past. It's one of the charities that we want to support. Uh, we didn't want to do the cookie thing because we knew we were going to do that for the first couple of, we wanted to do successive for cookies. Um, but I do think that uh, communication in the trustee's office has been lax. And I, I, again, I'm sorry. I know we were going through a lot of time trying to do the administrative aid. But I do know that similar to the two of you, the two of us, are very gung-ho with this program. And we want to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. So that's what happened. So hands have been slapped. You know, shame, shame, shame. I think we should be done. And I'll make a motion to receive and file. No, no, there's already a motion on the floor to make sure that this There was program. no second, was there? No, there okay, was no so second. Okay, so we're not taking care of that? No, there's no second at that. No. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. So wait, I'm sorry, what's the motion? To receive, receive and file and the file. discussion. To receive and file the discussion. Okay. Mrs. West. And I'll just, oh, if I could. Sorry. Um, everyone spoke, figured I'd better weigh in. Um, <laughs> So, you know, clearly there was a lack of communication. I've administered one of these programs. Um, basically, it was done in a way where every employee contributed a dollar, um, much larger organization, obviously. Those dollars were collected, and then um, they, were, they were sent up to an office. That office then sent out a note to everybody, if you have an organization that you feel is worthy of support, send it in by this certain date. They'll be weighed against the criteria. Um, in fact, I think it was you know, tell your organization to contact the county mm -hmm. and have the county um, send you the paperwork, you complete the paperwork, and then you get on the list and they determine where the funding goes. This is sort of somewhat haphazard, and I've thought that from the very beginning, even when it was being administered um, through the trustee's office, because I don't think there was a established criteria as to where those dollars goes. I think that needs to occur, and um, so I, I encourage you to um, take a, a hard look at this, whoever is administering it, and um, uh, make sure. And then in terms of the free day, I, I do payroll deduction. So mm -hmm. when they send out free day, that means I'm still it's paying. Free. Everybody right. who does payroll deduction right. is still paying, and right. so there shouldn't be any free days, period. If we're doing it, we're doing it. If we're not, we're not. Right. Um, rather than some pay, some don't. So my two cents. Thank you. And Roll call. It, to, wait, and to underline that, that was one of the things Mr. Key said, is to put some, some protocol or you know some, some process together. And maybe in this receive and file, we should appoint somebody. Or is this going to be you know, Joe's job as lead trustee? You know, I'm, that's a question. That's a question at the end of that. OK. Mrs. West, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Meltzer, no, yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Argona. Yes. Mr. Gillaham. Yes. Motion passes. Item 27. Direct the Refuse Committee to prepare a request for proposals for waste hauling service and direct the township attorney to provide contractual notice to the incumbent mm -hmm. waste hauler of, of townships intent to go out for bid. Board members, the township currently contracts with Green for Life, originally Rizzo Environmental Services, for waste hauling services. The extensions of contracts between the township and RES are mired in controversy given the involvement of former trustee Dean Reynolds and the principals at RES who either were convicted or pled guilty to, to federal corruption charges. 
The first extension was approved by the board on a 4-3 vote with, without being put out for bid as per the recommendation of the Refuse Committee. The second extension was approved on a unanimous vote largely because it provided the, mo the move to trash carts contained competitive rates and the inclusion of provision number 11, which provided the township with the option of terminating the contract with 120 day notice after November 30th, 2018. Competitive bidding is the way that we ensure the public that they receive the best service at the best rates. Contracts of this magnitude need to be immune to any efforts to subvert the law for personal gain. Competitive bidding can provide the public with at least some assurance that the township has a rigorous process for awarding contracts. As of November 30th, 2018, the board now has the option to restore competitive bidding as a policy that governs the award the awarding of a contract for waste hauling services. Therefore, we move that the Township Board direct the following. For the Refuse Committee to immediately begin researching comparable rates in comparable communities and begin the preparation of a bid process to be brought back before the Township Board. That the Refuse Committee inform the Board of their findings on a rate study and a proposed timeline for implementing the bid process. That the Township Attorney advise the Board on what notifications need to be provided to the current waste hauling contractor pursuant to provision number 11 in the current waste hauling agreement. Thank you for your consideration of this request. Respectfully, Paul Gil Gilham, Treasurer, Joey West, Trustee, Michael Keyes, Trustee. Mr. Pearl? Yeah, um, I reviewed this and I had some questions. I reviewed it with uh, request with uh, uh, Mr. Dolan quite extensively reviewed the contracts. And I don't have a problem with it going to the Refuge Committee. I have a problem with notifying the current contract um, with any notice until the Refuge Committee reviews this. Um, if we want to go out for a bid, that's fine, but I'm, it's indicated by Mr. Dolan that we don't want to notify um, GFL in any way, shape, or form that'll lose our current contract in case the bids are higher. They come in higher, which other communities have found out quite a bit higher, that we don't want to lose that. So he's indicated that we don't have to notify them at all. Just a courtesy that they um, that we're going to go out for bids if we so desire to go out for bids. I, I agree completely. In fact, I'll make a motion that we send this to the Refuse Committee for their discussion and review for two reasons. One, the Green for Life has their top management team came in and met with Mrs. Bednar, myself, and a few of her key staff and indicated that we have to change the way the charge for recycling or not recycle at all in this community. And I don't think this community wants that. So that's something the Refuse Committee should be discussing. And two, I can tell you that Dan Acavetti over in Chesterfield Township told me that they were in the same position and they went out for bid, and their bids came in starting at 14% higher, and in, in year 2022, it goes up to 29% more than what the current bid is. And when we take a look at the rates that are being charged by our company right now, even in our last year of the contract, which is 2026, we are still far below what Chesterfield Township is paying today. So by the year 2026, if they still have that contract, Chesterfield's residents are going to be paying a lot more than Clinton residents. So I caution the committee, which I wanted to go to, to carefully analyze, because I agree with Mr. Pearl, it should be analyzed, but I also agree that we're not going to put anyone on notice because if they bid it out, if we bid it out and the bids come in higher and we say, well, we don't like that, we want to go back to the old rates, what I'm told over in Chesterfield is they tried to do that. And the company told them, no, they were sticking with the new rates. Now, every contract is different. I understand that. We have a very good contract. But I do think that we need to send this, send the <clears throat> concept of this to the committee so they can have a discussion on what we want to do with recycling. And recycling has changed, and it's changed because of China. We were sending a lot of our recycled goods to China on the boats that would come here loaded and go back empty. No longer are we able to do that. Or they, I should say they, the contractors. Mm -hmm. So is, is there a support to I'll send? I'll support that. So, and, and if I could, so, so the motion that's being made mirrors 
the letter that was written right. quite yeah. nicely right. Yeah. Right. Um, no, to reiterate um, you know, three points. The refuse committee to immediately begin researching comparable rates in comparable communities, in a sense a rate study, yep. um, uh, for the preparation of a bid process to be brought back before the township board. Yep. Um, so... So basically what we're doing there is we're telling the public, you know, yes, this contract was done without a bid process, mm -hmm. uh, but um, now that we're under contract and we're looking at rates, um, it has been reviewed by a current group now that we have the option to do so. Right. Prior to November 30th, we did not have that option. Uh, the second point is um, inform the board of their finding on a rate study and proposed timeline for implementing the bid process if, of course, we need it. Right. And then three, to Mr. Pearl's point, that the township attorney uh, advise the board on what notifications need to be provided to the current waste hauler. Right. Yeah. So, so those are the three points. Right. So um, saying it in the letter, saying it a different way, we're agreeing with you. Right. We're, we're in agreement here. We have a responsibility to look at this, especially considering the history of right. this issue. Um, and so, as we discussed in the staff meeting, it's uh, myself, uh, I think Ms. Meltzer and Ms. West that are on the refuse committee. Right. And um, along, along, with, along, the, with staff. along with the relevant staff that, um, you know, works uh, right. on this issue. And so, um, I, I think we have a responsibility to do that. And as a member of the committee, I'm ready to get to work to do it. And Mr. Aragona? Yeah. So, just to clarify, so I, just, I want to make sure. sure of what we're doing here. We're not bidding out right now. Basically what we're doing is we're directing the refuse committee just to do some research. Let's see what's out there. It's fiscally responsible, kind of like you would do a financial review of, of your assets yearly with, with your financial advisor or something similar to that nature. Let's make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. Uh, let's just take a look at it. Let's, let's not let it sit by the wayside. Let's just do some research. But we're not actually formally going out for bid in any way. We we are we are directing the refuse committee to look at what is best for the township. Yes, and that is yes. We are researching the rates um, to determine what is uh, the right direction for the township. And if but it's not a rebid. If it is a rebid, they'll come back. And there say, was no why. such thing as a bid. No. So there's no such well, thing as a rebid. Initial, okay. So because initially. because there was no bid. Initially we there went, was. Initially there was, and then there was an extension, and then there was a second extension with no bid process. I'm sorry, I wasn't here. So, that. Right, that was 13, right. I think, right? 14? Well, the, okay, so that's before my It time. was bid before I was even here. Okay, so, okay. So, right. you know, the, the, the no. two things that I, that I have dealt with are two contract extensions, and um, the recommendation originally was we need to go out for bid, that process from that refuse committee was upended by somebody popping up with, hey, I just happen to have some great rates here, and I don't know that we'll be able to beat them, and so we should just uh, renew this for a long, long period of time. Sure. Without but knowing what was going to happen within this market as well. Right. What we later found out is that the contractor was just trying to nail down contracts so then they could sell the company. Exactly. And so what this is going to do is instead of saying, well, hey, I got paperwork saying that we got great rates, this you and Ms. Welt Ms. Melson and Ms. West are going to do some research on it. If you say, hey, you know what, we need to bid this out. This is financially responsible. You're going to come back to us. If not, correct. We'll, we'll Precisely. Mr. Cannon, maybe I can Precisely. give this whole process up if I may. We, we, do, <coughs> we do have a letter from Green for Life that I'm going to give you if you don't have a copy. I do not have a copy, and that's as a member of the Refuse Committee, it'd be great to have that. Right. Well, I have one. I have one. Oh, I don't Can you one. send it to everybody here on the board? I don't have Of course. One. No. You're not on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has to be addressed, whether yeah. or not we're going to continue recycling. Right. That, that, that is something I was going to do. Yeah. I'll get it. So can we add that then? Mr. Dolan? Yeah. Yeah, get that yeah, Basically, we have a refuse committee. It's a subcommittee of the board. The subcommittee of the board doesn't have authority to direct or to effect any type of rebid or anything. All it can do is make a recommendation. The By sending it to the subcommittee, you're not triggering any kind of termination of the contract. 
You're not also approving any bid process. At this point in time, as I understand it, if I may, the, the request is to examine the pricing on the contract to determine whether we might want to consider rebidding, and then also to examine their request as they presented it uh, with their concerns and their proposals on recycling. That's exactly right. My, my preliminary statement would be this. The second extension, paragraph 11, sets forth a provision by which the township is empowered, if it chooses, upon written notice of 120 days to terminate the contract. In no way, shape, or form are we doing that now, nor is that a a mission, Directed. so to speak, of the Refuse Committee. Uh, that, by the way, would require a vote of the Township Board, and that would, in effect, end the contract and any extensions. That applies to the contract and any extensions. So at this point, we're simply, if as the motion's been stated, addressing those two yeah. points and asking that the Refuse Committee, upon completion of its task, come back to the Board. Okay, what I'd like to do is to further emphasize what Mr. Gillingham just said. We have really good rates. Mrs. Bedar, would you please take our rate if we were to continue the contract in 2026, which is when the contract ends, and compare that to today's new rate in Chesterfield Township? So based on our second extension, a per month cost, the township is going to pay $13.65 per month per resident. In 2026. 26. This would be through March 31st of, of uh, 2026. Currently, the bid that went out, Chesterfield bid out in July of 2018. They Those rates went into effect January 1st of 19. So it's all of, what, 14 days old. Um, their current rate is $17.15. Already much higher than our current rates. That's how much better our rate is. Yes. That's why I, I I'm urging you to look carefully. Smaller at community, rates. more spread out. You know, you need more of an apples to apples comparison, but no doubt we structured this letter right. and this agenda item as three things. We're now adding a fourth from the discussion here today. The first three things are researching we, we've comparable already, communities. We've already got it. Um, bringing those back to the board in whatever um, recommendations about a bid process um, and that the township attorney advise us on what notifications we provide to the and incumbent. Mr. Gillingham, I don't have a problem with it going out for bid even if you find that smaller communities are paying more. As long as it doesn't jeopardize our price now. As long as the attorney can guarantee that we're not letting them out of the contract, then I don't care if we go out for bids. The answer, they're, they're shaking, their, there's two representatives from Green for Life here, and they're shaking their heads no, that that would affect it. If they come in a bit higher, that is the rate. Could we have them introduce themselves? I've never met a representative from the from the company. Okay, we have a, someone at the podium now. Bob Hogan, 36755 Bar Street. He's from the uh, township, or <laughs> GFL, provided tons of garbage cans, or whatever we want to call those. Who's... Uh, if we cancel a contract, who pays for those? Are those already paid for? I can answer that. So, correction on that. The first contract provided the recycling containers. The second contract, um, Rizzo Environmental Services came to us and said, we want to provide these, um, con or these uh, trash containers. Um, and um, we want to extend the contract for 18 years. And it was the person who actually sat in this seat, the treasurer, Bill Sowerby, who said, no way, we're buying the containers. We will extend the contract. However, provision 11. And provision 11 says, at the expiration of the first contract, we can then, with 120 days notice, go out for bid. So by us buying the containers, not Rizzo buying the containers, that then gave us the ability to go out for bid, unilaterally deciding that. Very good, thank you. The last question is, okay. how many trash haulers are there out there? There can't be like more than a half dozen. Mrs. Benard, do you happen to know currently? 
You know, when we've been out in the past, um, I know we've had four or five, but I don't know currently, and I, I don't have any. I think there were two who bid in Chesterfield, and, and that's all. Right. When you're down to two or three possible trash haulers, and if they're not like in adjacent neighborhoods or adjacent communities, it's got to cost more for those people and for us ultimately, the, if we went out to them. The, you're right. I can tell you today I, I received a number of notices from residents who are extremely happy with our current hauler, the way they treat them in the neighborhood, the way they pick things up when they fall out of the bins, and just the way that they respect the community and the neighborhoods. So 100% of the calls and emails I got today were in favor of the company that we currently use. I'm not one of the residents that you were talking about, but I am also 100% behind them. Thank you. Okay, so we, we, we so know no, what we yes. want to do. Yeah. We're all in agreement. Right. Let's just vote on it. Oh. Mr. Kennedy. Who made, who made a motion? Mr. Keyes. Thank you. And thank you again, Ms. West and Mr. Gillahem, for bringing this forward and signing the letter. Um, I think this is important because, one, although Mr. Kane has pointed out that you need to factor in price, I also think we need to factor in the integrity of the contract. Mm -hmm. It does bother me that, that there was no bid um, on the second round. And also the fact that it is an 18-year contract. I mean, that, to me, is eye-opening. In the staff notes I have here, the second extension was for 18 years. The, it clarify. ends in 2026 if the board chooses. At this point, paragraph 11 actually says that we can go out after December 31st of 18. Perfect, and that's so, exactly why so we that's what So that's what we're discussing. Mm -hmm. Not November, but December 31st of okay. 18 mm -hmm. is when we can have this discussion. And then it has years, and hold on. It has years four through six, which would take us through 2022. And then years 7 through 10, which takes us through 2026. So your notes are it must have been a typo. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and then, it, obviously, too, in regards to the bid process. And then another thing I want to make sure that the committee looks at is the quality of service. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Cannon, I, I agree with you that the staff has always been very friendly. Uh, the only problem is I live off a of 15 mile. In the south end of our township, a lot of our roads are very narrow. Um, when the new bins were, in, were put in and the, the new arm rails were installed, the, dry, the trucks went on my street alone. We used to have three drivers. We now have one driver. And actually, in the morning, our street is completely blocked off because this one truck has to come down the entire street. And so there's usually just a line of residents and cars behind it. Um, I'm included in one of those. And so we do have to keep in mind the fact that we had a original contractor bid on this. They were awarded at a certain at a certain price. And I don't know that they're maintaining the same standards that we had envisioned when this contract was signed. And that is why it is so important. The policy change that Mr. Gillahan, Mr. Ms. West, and myself brought forward, uh, and Mr. Pro, I believe you were on that letter as well, um, to improve our um, contract policy, to put on our website a list of all of the contractors that we do business with, the expiration of their terms, and the cost of that contract. Because as Mr. Argona alluded to, him and I were not here. Mr. Gillahan was not here when this contract was first voted on. And so the only way we have to know about this is old documents in the trustees department where I found a folder of contracts and Mr. Gillahan said, yep, I have that sitting on my desktop waiting. And so it's through a lot of coordination, but I think we can make that a lot easier if we coordinated as a whole board. And that's a perfect example of the benefit of that policy change that we brought forward last year on getting all of these contracts online on our website so the public can follow along as well. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Keats. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillahan. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 28, discussion regarding administrative aid position. There is no letter. Yeah. There is no letter on this. I called my fellow trustees on this one. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, get this uh, situation uh, back out in the open. Um, we ended last year, a little over a month ago. Uh, we'd pick somebody. All four trustees agreed, and she turned us down. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, uh, sometimes that's how it goes. So um, I just kind of wanted to bring it back up, uh, see if anybody had any comments on it, anything they wanted me to look at uh, personally going forward um, uh, for this agenda item. Um, you know, it, we did have some disagreements, but I, I think we kind of all came together at the end. I, my personal opinion is that we could lower the salary range. In fact, 
I actually wanted to uh, share our administrative aid with the senior center. That was kind of a concept that I had that kind of didn't go anywhere, unfortunately. But um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I recognize that again. We are. I'm part of a board, and and what the board decides, uh, we'll go with that because um, that's how it works in a democracy. So, uh, just wanted to bring it forward. Kind of been a long night already, but so I won't take up any more time. But if anybody has anything, I'm I'm, I'm willing to. Well, I'm sorry, I'm taking over the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pointing, I'm taking questions. I, 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 <laughs> you can take I, a break, I, but you can't. On the two points that you just made, I think that the um, administrative aid being shared with the senior center is a wonderful idea. However, the people over there are uh, union. We'd be, this poor man would have every grievance in the world on his desk, and I think we would be. That's number one. How, how do you mean? Uh, well, it's you. You have the people at the front desk. You were yeah. talking about front desk and stuff. That those people are union. This person is not. The part timers. Yeah, yeah they're even in. Well, but uh, other right. people be, there, you know, like Debbie and others are union. Sure. Yeah. So, so but, but if you remember correctly, my my right. idea was to share with one of their part times because unfortunately they have kind of a revolving door where right. they get right. in a couple people and then they they find a right. full time job. So yeah. my and idea they, was to make one of those a full time with us. Yeah, um, which we do have now a full time over there, which is why Nick left to, to go over there. Um, but I don't, so I don't really think it's going to work. Number yeah, that's one. fine. That's fine. Number two, if we would lower the salary, uh, we would need to start all over again. We can't use the seventy nine people that we had before because that those people were under the they came in under the guise of, you know, the salary range, et cetera. But number three, more than anything, we did. Focus in on one. She said no. Uh, one has since left for a far, far better job than, or far, far better pay than uh, what we have here. But we did come down to two. Correct. And both of those are are stellar. Um, and I think if the four of us can go ahead and agree on one of those two, we could go ahead and offer it. That's how I look at it. But that's just my, you wanted my, you wanted our opinion, I'm giving <laughs> this, you my opinion. This is an Appreciate appointed it. position, so the, you can do it any way you choose. You do not have to re-advertise. You could pick somebody walking down the street. If three of you agreed on it, bring it forward for a vote. Well. Mr. Aragona, you have the floor still? Yeah, the, uh, I think Ms. Ms. Mrs. Meltzer okay. had a question after, and then I just was, like I, I was just wanting to know when the guys think you might fill the position, especially <laughs> since we're going to have that long, um, uh, budget Ways and Means meeting on <laughs> the ethics policy. And so, and, and you know, I, I appreciate Kim Irvine, my deputy, and also mm -hmm. the supervisor's deputy, um, Liz Vogel, that have stepped up to take right. the place to help you guys out. But that, you know, they, they both are very, very busy. And adding to yes. their workload, we hope has, um, you know, an end near in sight. Yeah. I tried to take the casual yes. day program. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I, I'm in agreement with you. I, I, I'm it's, in agreement with you. As far as the timeline, Ms. Meltzer, um, I, like I said, I'm just trying to, the first meeting, I'm trying to get some input. Um, at that point, my next step was actually to meet with Mr. Smith. So I'm, I'm very happy that he's here to hear all the input. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Great. he and I will probably be sitting down within the next week or two. And, and um, once we have a plan going forward and there's some we, type of action that needs to be taken on the board, yeah, we'll bring it back. So two. hopefully within the next couple of months here. Yeah. Mr. Keys. Oh, yeah, just quickly, thank you, Mr. Argona, for bringing this on the agenda. I thought you were absolutely incorrect in what you were saying, bringing this to the forefront. Um, it's an important issue. Is there any way that we can schedule, you can work with the other three trustees to schedule a meeting similar to what Mrs. West had done um, previously, either on the 21st, which is a Monday, that we don't have a township meeting, or on the 28th, we have a township board meeting, and maybe we can meet at 6 o'clock or 5.30 to get an idea of where we're at. I'm similar to Ms. West, where I know that we came up with a list of four names. Two of those I know that are no longer options, but I'd like to make a selection out of the, the two remaining names. Um, and if that's something that we can do at that meeting, we can forward a recommendation to the board. If not, uh, we can forward a different <laughs> recommendation, which would be something more the lines of lowering the pay or something that you were recommending. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to be a good idea because I don't think we have consensus on either one of those two at this point. Um, no, but they well, want to have a meeting, so we should have a meeting. Right, but we don't even know. I mean, if you've you, talked you, with... You guys want a meeting? We, we can we do that. That's fine. But as far as voting on one of those two, I... No. Right now, I don't see a consensus. No, but, but we should have a meeting. So we can discuss the four that. of us. That's what yeah. we need to discuss it. Yeah. Right. I right. Think. But do you want to set a date right now, Mr. Aragona? 
Yeah. Uh, what did you say, 21st or 28th? Yeah, the 21st or the 28th would if be great. If you guys want to look at your schedule, I'm, I'm okay with that, yeah. Wait, one moment, please. The no. 21st at 6.30 in the township. Um, well, tw 21st guys can do, is... Can't um, they talk about this after the meeting? This well, is not... Well, we no, can't because there's four of us. So that's, the we don't have an administrator. Martin Luther King Day is 21st. So at 6.30, <laughs> we could very well be... Can't do Martin Luther King. How about the 28th, but prior to the meeting? Six o'clock? Mm-hmm. You guys good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm good. That's great. But Mrs. Meltzer, Ms. Yes. Meltzer. <laughs> wait, you were asking about timeline, if that's two weeks from now, and then let's just say we go ahead and offer a position, mm -hmm. that's another two weeks. So you're looking at at least a month. Yeah, at so least. I will have to at least I know, have to get our staff to. I know that in previous board meetings we had make rec made the recommendation of getting a temp, and if that's something that you feel needs to be brought back up to the board, either you or the supervisor, please mm -hmm. let us know. Okay. Um, would you mind, though, um, posting that meeting on behalf of the trustees? Uh, and actually, I should ask, is, would uh, your deputy mind coming to that and taking mm -hmm. notes? And mm -hmm. I'll ask. I'm I sorry. Don't know if, I, I don't know if she has I a couple. I should ask first. Yeah, no, that's I'm, right. I'm, I'm I mean, here. And it doesn't, if it doesn't happen on that day, I don't think it's the end of the world. You guys would have to decide right. if it needs to change. I, I, would, I would say if it could be 530, just in case. 530. 530 can you six. Can you guys text me that just so I'm, there's I'll actually no make a motion to schedule that meeting. I think that would probably be the most appropriate. So to schedule a meeting of the four trustees on Monday the 28th at 530 at the township offices. I'll support that. And that would be an open meeting? Correct. Yes. Yes. Roll call. Okay, let me, I'm just looking at the calendar because Thank I want to verify. Um, okay, so but the 28th, we have a board meeting. Mm -hmm. so, right, at 6.30. Yeah. So it'll be all right. 5.30. Yeah. So you guys just want to do it before then? Okay. I'm sorry. And then who made the motion? Mr. I, Keys did, and then I seconded it. Mr. Keys? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. This is Meltzer. Yes, motion passes. Item 29, Item recommendation of the Personnel Vacancy Review Committee. Dear board members, the Personnel Vacancy Review Committee met on December 20th, 2018 to review the staffing requirements of one department. The committee is making the following recommendations. Water and Sewer Division, Public Services Department. The committee unanimously recommends the following. Authorization for one additional operator position and reduction of one utility worker position. This will bring the total number of authorized operator positions in the department to seven, with the total number of, of authorized utility worker positions reduced to 13. No budget amendment is required for fiscal, 2000, fiscal year 2019 for this change in department organization. Sincerely, William <coughs> Smith, Human Resources Director. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? So moved. Thank you. Support. Support. Roll call, please. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mr. Gillahan? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Peacock, you have three items in closed session. Are any of those items that will be coming out of closed session to vote on? He has one. Yes, only one. Oh, I'm sorry. He has one. Mr. Uh, are, do we need to come out of closed no. session for you? None for me. None for you? We do have to come out of closed session. Then we will do you first. Yeah. And then we will go back into so the table can close. Back. Right. Then we'll come back and <coughs> close the meeting, go into right. closed session <coughs> where we won't be coming out. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Then we will vote on item number 30 first to go into closed session to discuss contract negotiations. So move. Some support. Roll call, please. Uh, who made the Paul, Mr. Pearl made the motion? And I. And, okay. Mr. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Item 31, request closed session to discuss litigation. Wytovich? Oh, well, whatever. So, so moved. Support. So, yes. Supported by Mr. Gillaham. Mrs. West made the motion. Roll call, please. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Motion passes. Item 32, request closed session to discuss litigation. Purdue. So moved. Support. Support. Supported by Mr. Argona. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer? Yes. Mr. Argona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keyes? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillaham? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 33, uh, request closed session. Uh, Lipke Street. So moved. Support. 
Roll call, please. Written legal opinion. Adelaide. Legal opinion. Written legal opinion. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Keys. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of the December 10th, 2018 regular township board meeting. So moved. Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Keys. Yes. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passes. Approval of the bills. So moved. Is there a second? Support. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Mr. Aragona? Yes. Mrs. West? Yes. Mr. Keith? Yes. Mr. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Gillingham? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We're going into closed session to discuss one of the four items to be coming out of closed session, then going back into closed session. Turning to item 31 for disposition, Mr. Peacock. Ladies and gentlemen, um, based on my rec uh, discussion in closed session, I recommend that the uh, township sell the case against Mr. Vitovich for the sum stated in the, in the meeting. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need a we motion to adjourn to go back into closed session, and we will not be coming out. We have three more items to discuss, one contract and two lawsuits. So moved. Thank you. So motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn and also then go into closed session. Thank you, support. Roll call, please. Mrs. West. Yes. Mr. Pearl. Yes. Mr. Keyes. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Aragona. Yes. Mr. Gillingham. Yes. Mrs. Meltzer. Yes. Motion Thank you. passes. Meeting adjourned to go into closed session.